Hello everyone, my name is Admiral Redbeard, or Ryan as some of you might know me as. Today we are doing something special, something that we have been talking about for quite some time. Today, you finally get to see what it is like when beards collide. First of all, very spoiler heavy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. I'll put this at the beginning. Spoilers like crazy. Um, hey guys, if you did not like this game or you are upset by the way that it went, um, it's okay. You cannot like this game. Uh, we are definitely two people who really enjoy it. So the fact is, is that we are here to do that. And if you didn't enjoy it, that's okay. Um, we don't want to have any hate. We don't want any of that uh, to be presented at us just because it's something that we enjoy. Because I'm not going to shit on you for something that uh, you like. I don't want you to shit on me for something I like. So this is probably going to be with two big Last of Us fans. Uh, we're going to gush about it. Peace little. and love. Peace and we're love. We're going to gush. So that's just something I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware of moving forward with this. And now we'll get back into it. Well, here we are. Look at us. Look at us. Handsome couple of, couple of chaps, the, I'd say. The, the beards are here. They have finally... <laughs> combined they have fusion, They've amalgamated they have fusion dance dragon ball z style to be one what way does they go they go like this i mean uh the worst part like is, that. is that you, you're the other way and uh, oh <laughs> shit <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 fix that in post fix uh, it in post yeah, yeah right, i appreciate uh, that cgi all that i got it <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody hi welcome to the very first episode of when beards collide uh <laughs> my name as you already noticed in the intro, I'm Ryan, Admiral Redbeard, and this guy next to me is Beardo Benjo, or Ben, Hello there. as I'll probably be calling him, because um, we're on a first name basis because we're like best friends, so... BFFs at this point, totally, so... Totally, you know, we You can were, call we me were, Big B. <laughs> Big B? I'm gonna write Big that, B. Hold on, I'm gonna write that down. Uh, write that down, make sure you got that. Big I got B, it, I got Captain. it. I got, hey, it's somebody, it's somebody <laughs> back there. Uh, no one's here. Um... <laughs> Because yeah, you got to remember that the RhinoVision crew only sits into gameplays. They're never around for anything like this. Uh, Shocking. This is the, where's the dedication? Ah, uh, they're all at work. Uh, <laughs> nah, that's fair. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll let them off. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, guys, welcome to the very first episode. Uh, we had a few people uh, actually want this when we were uh, when I was sitting in on Ben's uh, or Big B uh, in his stream, and we are here to talk about The Last of Us Part Two. Some. <gasps> Yeah, something mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, even, I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks since it's been out, not even a month yet, but this conversation is still happening. I, I've noticed I keep looking at myself in my camera because I got this goddamn zit on my nose, and I hate that it appeared right before, here, I'll just, there we go. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't see it. You're doing all right on my end. Uh, that's good. I'll, I'll, I'll get it out. I'll get it out. <laughs> um, anyway, guys. So we're just going to be fucking bullshitting and seeing how this goes. I'm going to be drinking, and hopefully I don't get drunk by the end of this because I do have to drive later. I hope you do get drunk. Mm. That would make me happy. Well, I didn't bring a shot glass over by me, but I'll, I mean, I could take a straight swig. But uh, anyway, anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> enough bullshitting. Let's get into talking about The Last of Us Part 2. Let's do it. Ben, Big B, mm. my man, when it came... You just recently finished it. I finished it uh, about a week and a half before you did uh, because mm -hmm. I have no life and that's all I do is play Last of Us over and over again. <laughs> Let's start with this. What are your initial thoughts of the game? Just flat out, just the game. Yeah, like, like just overall, like what, like let's not not necessarily like a review score, but like if you were to just give it a quick, like what you thought of the game, give it to me. I went in with fairly measured expectations um i'll preface what i'm about to say with that okay. i've played the original last of us i played it on ps3 when it launched i played it on ps4 when they did the remaster i would consider myself a pretty big fan mm. of the last of us so i went in with fairly measured expectations because i'd heard about the leaks mm -hmm. uh people were already kind of being a little bit negative online I'd, I'd seen some some kind of kickback against what had been shown um but i went in with tempered expectations and honestly i came out the other end and i adored it I, I can't, I won't sit here and tell you it's a perfect game because I don't think anything is a perfect game, but it's pretty fucking close. And I honestly couldn't, I couldn't fault a lot of it. There are things I probably would have done differently, mm -hmm. but it wasn't my story to tell. 
Right. Um, it was Naughty Dog story to tell, and boy, oh boy, did they tell it. I, I loved it. I loved it start to finish. Um, I, it, it's been stuck in my brain ever since I rolled credits. It's one of them games I think will stick with me for years. Uh, Generation-defining game, if I'm perfectly honest. It, it, I loved it. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, it's it's something that like I, I would agree with every word that you have just said already, uh, which is why we're BFFs. <laughs> um, the, the, the fact is that ever since I rolled the credits, like there was so much, and we'll get into this more a little bit later, but it, it came to the fact that the retrospect look back on it helped me so much more reflect on what it is. And it just, I mean, I'll, I'll even say it right now. The fact was, is that when I started that game, uh, <laughs> God, now I have to do some fucking editing. I was just going to blast it out. There. I'm sorry. I'm it's, sorry. It's, You've done that to yourself. That was well, all on you. You want to know what's funny? And I'm just going to say this really quick. I've been thinking about this goddamn podcast with you for like two <laughs> weeks about like how I'm going to plan it out, what I'm going to say. Like I, I, I fell asleep one night and I woke up and I was like, that's good. Say that shit, yeah, right? That I was right just, th- I was just hoovering my house, <laughs> and I just had a couple of thoughts. I was like, I'm gonna, I need to bring that up because right, that's a really good right. point. So, uh, so where I, where I was with that, um, basically, when the game started, and like when you got the two and a half to three hour section, when Joel died, I have never been more <laughs> upset at any piece of media, and I said this in the G- the Gamer Jube uh, video as well, at any piece of media because of what. Joel meant to me. Joel is a character that I connected with so heavily with his in the first game with his reactions and his uh, just like the way that he handled situations. And yes, he is not a good person, but a lot of characters that I have fallen in love with are not necessarily the heroes uh, besides like Goku. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I just I resonated with him so much that like, I mean, I, I do cosplay for Joel. I'm perfecting that. I, I literally built my Dungeons and Dragons character off of Joel, um, like the way he speaks, the way he moves, his mannerisms, that type of stuff. So that scene, it ruined me. And I will say it ruined me for a lot of the game. And the reason is, mm-hmm. is that I but I, OK, I won't say ruined. I will say that it really put me in Ellie's shoes of how she was feeling. There wasn't a single moment the entire time I was playing at Ellie that I felt remorse or anything towards anybody in that game. I Mm. was balls to the walls, vengeance style, let's go. But that changed. Yep. But that changed. But that's something that I want to get into a little bit later because, like I said at the start, we're going to talk about some other things first because that's the heavy part. Um, Mm -hmm. So what I really want to talk about, and this is something that I don't think gets talked about enough, when it comes to the actual game of it. The gameplay, mm-hmm. the actual gameplay. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, Micro possession. Yeah, uh, it happens from time to time. Uh, <laughs> it, it's probably my wife saying to pick something up from uh, the grocery store. Uh, but the gameplay loop, like what I got from this gameplay loop in this game is there is almost, almost no difference from the first game to this game. Better animations, better graphics, more stuff to look at, a lot of stuff going around, which I love. It's something that I definitely, I I, I don't know what it is, that that format, I very much enjoy. But Ben, what do you think of the gameplay loop? And do you think that there could have been something different in what they tried to achieve from the first one to the next one? I think it's an interesting conversation to have about all games, because I think as gamers, you have an expectation that you play... I'll pull something out my ass. You play Gears of War 2. Mm -hmm. And then when you play Gears of War 3, you expect there to be a whole new suite of features. You expect the characters to do new things and there'd be new guns and there'd be new this and new that and new this and new that. I've never necessarily needed that. Mm -hmm. With The Last of Us, it felt more, it felt more natural for there to not be all these new systems and new things at play because it's a progression of the same story and it's a progression of the same world. So if all of a sudden we'd gone into this new game and, it's outlandish but they had grappling hooks they wouldn't it's ridiculous sure. but it's, <laughs> it's it's almost like adding a feature for the sake of adding a feature the characters still felt like they felt in the first game they still mm-hmm. felt like they had the same flaws they still felt like they had the same weaknesses they still felt as kind of vulnerable to that world mm-hmm. as they did in the original game um and i think that was a, a testament to it a few friends of mine had turned around and said oh the gameplay feels a bit dated mm-hmm. they didn't do much to it to, to improve over the first and i hadn't really thought about it in that regard it obviously, as you said, it looked a lot better. There were more details. There were more kind of... The attention to detail was incredible. But the actual minute-to-minute gameplay was almost identical yes. to the first game. And I didn't see that as a, as a as a bad thing throughout the journey. I understand why some people would have. I think people would have gone in and said, oh, I want more. But 
those minute to minute tiny details the way you add the gun upgrades and you get the kind of animation of adding the gun upgrade and then the way the gun looks going forward because you've changed it the way that you, oh, did, just, you didn't add your four times scope uh the first time that you had the opportunity and i was watching you i didn't that and i was really mad at you but i didn't say anything i added it really late <laughs> like i added that so key dude. in day three yeah, of <sighs> the second day three so oh, really like during during abby section I during was, abby I yes was not, uh, i was not there for that one but please continue. i stuck that on super late and started <laughs> yeah. popping heads off at a distance which was nice but it, it was the smaller details that i appreciated I, I didn't care that they didn't necessarily add something something i feel like they could have added yeah is a kind of a cover system okay. so one thing i think hasn't it kind of lends itself to that world just to be able to push up against the wall take cover and kind of peek and peek around that kind of thing i think a lot of people have spoken about how they wouldn't would want it that sure in the game it, it's the only thing i can actually viably like, like, think yeah and i think it would have made sense i think i remember them talking about in the first game and if you've never watched the last of us grounded behind the scenes uh, i've probably watched that as much as i played the game um i think they actually <laughs> talk about that the re like the reason that they didn't do it so that you'd have more free movement and because like yeah. like have you you played the uncharted games i'm assuming yeah yeah so the, the the cover system in that i actually find to be excruciatingly uh choppy because going in and out of cover kind of ruins that experience and the way that you yeah. stealth around with last of us i do agree with you i wish there was a little bit more of it but mm. uh, i also am terrible at cover so uh you know <laughs> pipe bombs and molotovs and fuck up <laughs> I think I think adding that into a game as well forces you to be static. So you take yes. cover behind something and you just sit there. Well, you, you just pop that, out and yes, you take shots. That's a great point. Exactly. The fact that, that you have to, like, I mean, there's not a single moment, I think, when I played that I'm staying where I am. I'm always mm. moving. Moving. Like, I mean. Constantly. I barely, I barely ran. I only ran from people in Abby's section because the, there were so many scars and I got very frustrated. Um, mostly just because, like, they kept. They kept seeing me because I wasn't being as stealthy as I could be. Yeah. Uh, so it was definitely my fault. I'm not a great gamer, and mm. I'm very impatient when it comes to it. I don't know why I've been able to play Jurassic <laughs> World Evolution for the past eight days straight, <laughs> but I am. Um, but I agree with you. Like, it, I can't think of, like, with this style of game, what gameplay was. Like, them adding the rope was really fun because anytime I try to yeah. toss that somewhere, it worked every time. Yeah. It, it, like, it was just like, would this work? And even if it wasn't getting me to where it would go, it still worked, which is really cool. Still worked. Um, and it like, acted like a rope. It acted like a rope. And have, have you read anything on like how like the coding and all that worked for that? Like the uh, one of the guys on Twitter. If I can find it later, I'll send it to you. Uh, like he just talked about like the asinine amount of like coding it took for this rope to I work bet. properly. I was like, yeah. I don't understand a word that's saying in this, but good on you, mate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the gameplay loop, man, I mean, I don't know what it is. There's something about, like, you go through a section, and even if it's the same every time, you go through a section, either you stealth through them, and you can bypass it, or you kill everybody, um, and then you get to wander around. I enjoy that. If I, were to, if I were to say that there was something there that I would add as far as even a storytelling aspect of it, you know, like, you, you now have all these characters who are standing there, and they're... They're out, they're out on watch. They're looking for scars. Like the WLF was out looking for scars and this and that. How long do they stay there? You know? Mm. How long are they out in this section of this map? And I don't mean, like, you can still have the level design. But, like, I think that it would be a, an interesting thing if you could remain hidden long enough for them to be like, all right, section's clear. We move on. And now without you killing anybody, you can mm. go through the area. Because, unfortunately, you can't relax and walk through the section without taking everybody down to my knowledge hi pup <laughs> <laughs> beautiful he's not barking that's the good part that's my alcohol <laughs> uh but that's just something that uh, that's something that i definitely think would be a very like because i like there's times where like i didn't want to kill everybody i wanted to like mm. i wanted to try to stealth which didn't work for me ever because no, same. well because once three people walked into like stood in a circle i was like <laughs> Whoo! i yeeted yep. a fucking molotov at him uh, every single time every time um but so i i think that would be an interesting thing because storytelling wise it's like this is why they're here sections clear now we're going to our next spot and you can now explore and you get to enjoy the world that they built without being like mm. i got all these dead bodies yeah yeah there wasn't really a, like a, a pacifist route through that game um, but like with so many games, the killing feels 
like the most gamey part of yes, the game. Yes, yes. So you know, I, I used Bioshock Infinite as an example I um, when I was explaining it. Stream, yeah, yeah, but it, it felt disconnected from your character because you just you just muller you're just massacring everybody. Right, Everybody's right. dying around you, and it felt in between the story beats that were kind of really kind of grounded in wow this is an incredible story you then spend two hours mowing down legions and legions of people right. and they just die around you right. and it didn't feel like true to your character it just felt like you do it because it's a video game right. you're killing people because it's a video but game that's the only reason you do it yeah whereas here it, it always feels justified in, in The Last of Us it feels like mm -hmm. part of that world it's, it's an exceptionally violent world violence is the currency in that world yeah. it's the only thing people know um, and just dominating people that don't adhere to the way you live right. is, is the only thing people know. So it made sense to go into them environments and kill those people. Right. As much as I would like a pacifist option, if you if you went through that game as a pacifist, let's say you played as Ellie and through the Ellie sections, you didn't kill anybody, that would that would fundamentally change yeah. the story. Right, right. The story you're, you're wouldn't right. feel right anymore. It yeah. would miss it would miss a lot of its kind of important beats because you hadn't gone on that journey of murder. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, game gameplay wise, I just I think the, the gameplay loop is fine. I think they they didn't need to change a huge amount from the first game. I can't honestly think gameplay wise what I would have added. Yeah, I mean, I that, mean that's why I brought that up because it's literally the only thing that like maybe it might work, but at the same time you're you're, yeah. you're completely correct about the fact that it wouldn't feel right to Ellie's story by any means. And then even when you get no. into Abby's part of it, I mean until other things happen in the story, you're not killing the WLF. Your the scars are all around you. So, and, yeah. and the, the, some of the best level design in Abby section, um, with the clickers, because it's something that a lot of people always like, Oh, it's a zombie game. Well, no, it's fucking not. It's about the humans in this story. It's about the humans. But yeah. God damn it. When the, when the infected show up, like, and, and when I say some of the best level design that I've ever witnessed, and I, I do truly mean this. I think it, it personally, from my side of things, after you go across the sky bridge mm -hmm. and you are going down the hotel, oh my god, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's Incredible. terrifying. Yeah. And just everything around it was just I don't know what it was. It just it it was one of the few times where it felt it was still Last of Us, but it felt so different because of how you were going through it. 100%. I completely agree. I, oh, I loved it. I And even at that point, unfortunately, like I said earlier, I'm still mad at Abby. <laughs> like, I yeah. I remember because my wife, my wife likes to watch me play video games, and she was watching me play Last of Us. And we're talking about the whole time, and as we're crossing the sky bridge, I looked at her and I went, fuck, I like Abby. <laughs> yeah. I hated it. I think, I think <laughs> if, if you... <laughs> <laughs> and not 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 everybody because obviously there has been that kickback oh, online i won't, oh, yeah, I won't go oh, too far into it because i'm sure fine. we'll touch upon it later but yeah. i think most people had that moment mm -hmm. that like light bulb moment of ah oh, fuck i like her i mean they i did, get it they did exactly i understand what it. they meant to do like that was yeah. the whole purpose of what they did and yes you could be pissed i was one of those people mm. I, there was a brief I, I i after after abby killed joel i didn't give a fuck i put my controller down i went outside i had a smoke i was cooling down i had to pour a goddamn drink i was like i don't know if i can keep playing i mm. legit didn't think i could do it because of how upset i was yeah but i still stand by that i mean i wasn't happy with the game of thrones any either but i watched it <laughs> and i was done and i actually I, I used game of thrones as an example when i got into some discussions yeah. with people that really didn't like last of us because and i think they're two very different things well, and when, when, I, absolutely yeah i mean i was very disappointed with game of thrones as well but Game That's of Thrones had this episode, almost <laughs> Game of Thrones had this almost kind of slow, not even slow, fast decline yes. into the point where you could tell the directors didn't care about the product anymore. Mm -hmm. They wanted to move away from it and they just wanted to rush to the to the right. to the end. Right. Um and you could see that in the way that watch season one, watch season two. When yeah. someone went on a journey from Winterfell to King's Landing, sure. it would take four episodes. You know, yeah. it was they were traveling in real time. And then in that last season, it was we're north of the wall. Now we're at Winterfell. Yeah, now we're at King's Landing. Now we're rushed. here. And, and they were rushed it. But with The Last of Us, disappointment, if you were disappointed, I think should... I'm not going to enforce what you think, but <laughs> should feel different because it's still quite clear that the people that are involved in that game care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really care. And they made some choices that they... I think they knew fundamentally that oh, they were going to annoy 100%. people. 100%. I mean, even, even Troy Baker said it like, God, two years ago. Like, you, yeah. people will not like this game. And I feel bad for Troy because he's barely in it because he's absolutely, <laughs> I, I think he's one of the best, uh, best not just voice actors, but actors out there. 
Uh, oh, he's incredible. I, you know, but it's still, I, I agree with you. It, it comes to the idea that like, and like I said at the beginning of the video, you cannot like this. It's fine. Yeah. There's not a problem with that. I have plenty of friends who didn't like fucking, who, who uh, a bad example, but like, I loved Assassin's Creed 3. Everybody else fucking hated it. I loved it. <laughs> I hate that game. And that's fine. And that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 once again, God, we have so many things, Ben, that we could uh, we could talk about. Even so, but that's that's the biggest point about it is that it's like these characters, these things, it's not your story to tell. I had so many things built up in my mind of what hmm. I was expecting, what I was ready yeah. for. I was ready for another Joel and Ellie adventure, no matter what it was about. And it mm -hmm. got ripped from me. And this is yeah. where I think, after talking about gameplay, I think this is when we can go into starting to talk about the story. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know if there's anything else that we could really talk about with the gameplay. Um, no, I, I don't think so. so I've, I've had people come to me and say the gameplay felt dated. Um, and my retort to that is, I don't. what would you add? Mm -hmm. Because I honestly don't know what you would add to kind of upgrade it. That's it looked stunning. The worlds were believable. Uh, you know, the attention to detail was incredible 100 i don't know what i would add that would be meaningful yeah um, to that experience personally uh, yeah. one thing i will say yeah go ahead which is which i did find strange the strangest thing about the gameplay yeah was they removed the ability to be able to swap out your throwable item did so they, like did they in well in the first last of us if you were holding a brick yeah but you wanted a bottle i'm fairly confident you could pick up a bottle instead, guess, and you would put down the brick. You you would in the first Last of Us, yes. Did they remove that? Because I guess I guess I use those I use those items a lot more. This I time. use them constantly. That, that was yeah. my thing. I don't think I ever really got an opportunity to get around to the fact that I could switch between a brick and a bottle because once I had that bottle, it was ready to go. It it was the strangest <laughs> thing for me to notice, and it's not even like a negative. Weird. I just found it strange because. I, I picked up a bottle at one point and yeah. I went, I don't want to bottle someone. I want to hit him with a brick. Yeah. And it wouldn't let me pick up the brick. I had to throw the bottle before I could pick up the brick. Interesting. I guess, uh, huh. Which is a strange, it's just a strange, when I, when I plug tiny it little in, thing. Yeah, when I plug it back in, whatever that might be, but there's another game coming out next week that uh, it'll be a while. I don't know. Uh, don't worry about it. It's, it's something stupid. Pa Patapon 3. Uh, Pegoblast. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, God, I didn't even realize that. I'm, I'm also one of those people that I only use the brick and the bottles to distract. I never, ever, even in the first Last of Us, which I beat eight <laughs> times, hit somebody with it. I never throw I it. never, yeah. ever use them as a distraction. Man, I always hit people with them. Polar fucking opposites. That's so funny. Because I, when I was watching you in the play, face. you would do that. And I'm like, I remember sitting there watching you uh -huh. play, and I'm like, Ben, toss it over there, and then you can fucking get the dog over there, and then you can, uh, and then you just bam, and I'm like, oh, I mean, that works too. Uh, well, you just do that. Yeah, yeah. I've mean, got an aggressive play style. But. <laughs> it's another really fun thing about the gameplay in general is that it, regardless of how you feel like it's either dated or too similar to the first one and all that, you can play in so many different ways. When I watched mm -hmm. you, I play a completely separate way. And then one of yeah. my friends, Steven, who is also on the channel once in a while because he lives in Arizona, so he's far from us. Uh, He's all stealth. That motherfucker beats these games on grounded, <laughs> you know. Like, and I, I don't even, I can't believe it. <laughs> I have to kill everybody. I have to go full on die hard. I just wanted to learn everything. That I needed to find everything. I'm too picky. And the worst part is, is that I am the worst trophy hunter of all time because I miss so much shit and I can't believe it. I can't. Oh, I look it. everywhere and I'm, I'm always convincing myself. I've been everywhere. I've oh, seen yeah. everything. Oh, There's nothing left. Oh, 100%. And well, then the game's like, oh, you missed like well, 80 Well, you remember how many times I yelled at you on your stream when I was like, go back, go back. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ben, like the chat's a little bit like like a, like a 30 seconds delay. I'm like, Ben, turn around. 30 second delay. <laughs> you tell me to turn around. I'm already like two miles oh, down the I road remember, at that there point. Was, there was one section where like you walked through a door and you had barely explored. And I just, uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember exactly what section <laughs> it was. I think it was the first time that uh, when... Ellie and Dina, when they when Ellie leaves Dina at the hotel or at the theater the first time, and she goes off when she's going to go try to find Abby. I, it's day two. I'm, I'm almost mm -hmm. positive it's day two. And you went through a section. You killed everybody because this was the first time. You, oh, it was the first time you got to meet dogs. Yeah. And you explored a little bit, but there was like four places that you didn't walk <laughs> around. And I'm sitting there going, Ben, Ben, I'm here. Buddy. Just getting out of here. Like it's 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 me like on the opposite side of your window back there, just bad. <laughs> I'm leaving now. Everyone's dead. And you walk through the door. Let's go kill went, some more people. Oh. 
But it's amazing that you could st- – because, like, I do. I spend 30, 45 minutes searching around. Like, mm. and I, I learned later that there's stuff up on top of shelves because I'm so used to things being lower and everything. And I looked up at one point, I think during Abby's section, I went, oh, I missed a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I missed a lot. <laughs> stuff everywhere, man. Oh, everywhere. Mm. I'll play it again, and I'll, I'll pick up the collectibles on a second run through. But oh, yeah. for me, that first run through was – I just wanted the raw experience of, oh, of that game. I Absolutely. Just, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I still haven't even let it come at me. I still haven't even found everything in the first Last of Us. Like I said, I beat it like eight times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I can't believe I missed One day. shit. So when we go into story, which I know, I mean, this might run long. Let's be honest. Fuck it. Because um, this is the first time I actually get to talk to somebody face to face with it. You know, well, <laughs> as face to face as we'll ever. Well, I won't say ever. When BeardCon happens uh, in a couple yeah, of years. It's happening. It's, ha- it's, to- it's, it's happening. That's got to be a thing, right? I think that's probably a real thing. It's got to be BeardCon a thing. probably we'll, exists. We'll look it up later, and then we'll meet there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have a few notes of things that I really want to talk about, and I, I wrote these down as I started my second playthrough, which I didn't get very far in my second playthrough yet, but I started putting notes down because I wanted to talk about it. Um, and I'll just list them off and let you talk for a little bit here because I overwhelm everything. Um, I wanted to talk about um, Abby's determination at the beginning of the game of like what she had dealt with to get to that point where she was going to take her revenge on Joel. Um, Abby's crew not wanting to do this pretty much from the get go, and that you and that you can see that in everybody, and why this mm-hmm. mirrors Ellie's journey of what she has already been through. Not her journey in Part Two, but in her journey from Last of Us Part One to this moment. So go ahead. If you need me to prompt you again, I will. But please, Ben, Big B, tell me what you got. Abby's determination. Mm-hmm. Abby's determination. I love Abby. I she's, uh, she's great. She, and Laura fucking Bailey, best. Just gonna just gonna say it. Oh, I love her. I love her. I think she's incredible, and I fucking hated her. I know. With- <laughs> With a burning passion, you know, and I, I did it on stream. It's it's all it's all there for the world to see. That the, the second, the second that golf club comes down, oh. the second that moment is left and the, the kind of dust settling, I think the first thing I said is I'm gonna fucking kill her. I'm gonna light some I'm gonna fucking kill that bitch right now. <laughs> you know, I, I I I was ready. I was I was ready to do it. And then mm-hmm. the game does that incredible thing where it lets you run away with that emotion for 10 hours, oh. 10, 12 hours, you just run with that emotion of, I'm going to go kill her. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and kill her. And then when you get to the point where you think you're about to do it, it pulls the rug out from under you and goes, cool, now you play as her. <laughs> now I- you are her. <laughs> Sorry to interject. I lost my fucking mind. When it went yeah. to Seattle day one, I was yeah. just like, you're actually going to make... No. Yeah. And, and, and then that that is the point at which I think... Mm-hmm. A fan base shattered in two. Yep. Figuratively and quite literally, because you had probably not even in two, probably into about a thousand different pieces. You will have had the people that soldiered on angrily. You will have had the people that at that point went, No, fuck this, I'm not playing. Right. Yeah. yeah. You would have had the people that went, Oh, okay, oh, I'm mm-hmm. open to this. There would have been a whole gamut of people that kind of reached that point. And I reached the point and I tried to approach that game with a really open mind. The entire time I was like, keep an open mind. I hadn't watched a huge amount of trailers. All I really knew going in was I was going back into the world of Last of Us. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect an Abby and uh, an Ellie and Joel story. Sorry, mm-hmm. I, I just expected to be in the Last of Us world. So yeah. when I landed at Abby Day One, Seattle, I I kind of had, I had to take a moment to reflect and think about it because Ellie and Joel are only the good guys because we played as them yep. for twenty hours previously. Mm-hmm. If you think of the Last of Us as a living, breathing world. Abby existed within that world as well. Just because we didn't see her story, just because we didn't play as her during The Last of Us 1, doesn't mean she isn't there. She's there. She's living her life. She's she's going about her business. She's playing with her dad, who she loves very much. She's, she's existing. Right. And then we get to the end of The Last of Us, and the character that we've seen as a hero does this heinous thing, mm-hmm. this terrible, selfish thing, and he kills all these people. Shot him every time. Shot them every, every every time. All three of them. Fuck them. Every time. I did it. And and I had the debate with friends uh, coming up to the launch of Last of Us 2 where we spoke about if you were in that position, what would you have done? And all of us were like, oh, yeah, I would have killed him. And, it's like, and that's 
a different conversation for a different day because that's kind of shit what does that say about me but i mean it, it's a it, very real thought though like i mean it's it, a real thought it really is because the fact is and and that even goes into play with what he says at the end of the game with when she is making amends and i would do it all over again it's we a- we empathized with Joel. Absolutely. He, he was a bad man, but we empathized with him. But the only reason I think there was such a vitriolic and angry outburst from people was because we played it. We yes. played with him for 20 odd hours um, and, and we had that connection to him. It. That's the genius yeah. of it. You, they, yeah. they, they forced us to be that way. Like Neil Druckmann was like, he probably he probably finished making that first game and went, <laughs> I'm going to fuck him up the next game. You love this guy? <laughs> You're, he's out of here. Like, well, this is it. I mean, 100%. But, but Abby... Yeah, if, we, if, you, if you think about Abby, she, like she, she, she lived through that. Yeah, and I th- the anger that people have towards her is because we didn't we didn't see her side of the story, and this is why I kind of kept an open mind. And so you then pick up Abby at day one, mm-hmm. Seattle, and I did take a moment to be like, well, okay, and I already knew she was driven by, I already kind of knew what she was driven by. I understood at that point, you know, what she'd been through, but I was completely open to see that journey and find out mm-hmm. the struggle she'd gone through. The first thing you see. When you start playing as Abby, she wakes up and she walks out at them double doors, and there's that big fucking gym oh, it, right in front of her. What a fucking! I loved that. And it's like, okay, well, she she's had four years where she's just been training, yeah, and working and learning and waiting for her moment for one moment to to to, to pay this guy back one shot that's taken away the only thing in that horrible world that meant anything to her. Yep. She had, you know, a little rare sunshine. For the, the way it's depicted in this game, you know, the fireflies that were working at the hospital that were that were kind of ready to get the cure going, good people, mm-hmm. you know, good people that had to make a terrible decision. Um, and Joel took that decision away from not only them, but he took it away from Ellie as well. Yeah. You know, he didn't he didn't let her have that choice. But to go back to Abby, she had to watch her dad die, and then just had to. My God, there's a really loud car outside. My house. I don't know if you can hear I, that I car did, outside I my did house. Just hear that, yeah. Holy shit! It's like it's like I was going a muscle that, car. That was some um, American shit right there. I, I think it is, man. They've driven all the way asshole. over from where you were. At. How dare he? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Abby, she she'd lived through all that, and she's had all that time to kind of think about it, and it's just it's, it it could clearly consumed her mm-hmm. for four oh, years, one hundred percent. Yeah, to the point where she, you know, and she'd got to that point where she felt comfortable and powerful enough. To be able to go and take him down. Yeah, I I, I sympathised with her, and and, it, and I had to go through the the painful journey of seeing a character that I liked, who isn't a, a good person, but he's a character I liked. I had to watch him die. I then had to come to terms with the fact that, well, shit, I'm not going to get to play as him now. Yeah, that, that kind of sucks. Was, that was a big. That was a big. Just I'm sit. I was literally sitting there in my cosplay going. Oh, just take this off. Like, uh, I, was I, like, <laughs> I was like, I got all, I got all dressed up for this. <laughs> But, but the game forces you to then go to make your peace and go, okay, you're angry. I understand. Now look at this. Mm-hmm. Understand mm-hmm. why she did it. Understand why she's here. Understand why she's as powerful and as ready and kind of just understand why she is the way she is. And that was the genius of that game. I yeah. think it divided everyone. But for me, it was the genius of that game because it, it forced me to like a character that I wasn't prepared to like. Well, I completely agree with you, man. Like one, I mean, it's, 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 it's why like when people say shitty storytelling, I, I will, this, that one, I will harshly disagree with you or bad writing because think about it in this perspective, right? Let's say hypothetically, the first game was about Abby. Mm-hmm. What if you got to play as Abby and not, not this grandiose adventure that Joel and Ellie went on, but her break, like, or even like, let's not even like the whole first Last of Us. Let's say they did a Lost Legacy type game, you know, yep. a forty dollars game that you played as Abby and you got to build up to this whole moment. And then the end of that game was all the flashbacks that you did. Now, obviously, they put the flashbacks with Abby in a certain spot. That's the storytelling that works really yep. well. But think about if all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's just another, it's just, it's just two other people in a Last of Us story. Like, how cool is that? And then you get to the end and you find out that Abby's dad is the one who got killed. And you go, oh, what is oh, Last of Us 2 going to be? Fuck. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Like, now, obviously, they didn't do that because they did it the exact, I think, the proper way. But just like you said, it's the exact way that people have to think about it. We spent, like, the fastest I've ever beaten Last of Us, the first one, was probably about 12 hours is how quickly I yeah. got through it. It's about a 15-hour game if you really take your time. But... 
you know, 12 hours in Joel's shoes, about three and a half total in Ellie's shoes at that point. Uh, mm-hmm. If you suck at the blizzard, which is one of the only times I've ever rage quit in a video game. Uh, <laughs> broke my red PlayStation 3 controller for that. Uh, hint for everybody playing the blizzard in the first one. Just go left. Literally hug just... the wall all the way out. Every time. <laughs> uh, just saying. Uh, but it's it's amazing that, like, it's just like if you play any other video game or even watch a movie and you watch in somebody's different perspective, right? What is the biggest argument? And, 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 and this might come just mostly on my side of the pond here, Ben, but everybody's point of view, right? Left and right, whatever it might be. If you don't listen to both sides of the story, how can you make a judgment? Now, I say that in, I say that in America just because of the there's a lot of stuff that goes on here um, when it comes to it. But that's why I love this type of storytelling so much because I've always considered myself like, Hey, you know, you, you like this guy. Cool. Tell me why let's listen. And I, and I'll come, I'll, I'll combat you a little bit with certain aspects, but I want to listen. And just like you said, I was so fucking mad at Abby. I didn't want to like her. But huh. I got to meet her, and sure, I still didn't get to spend as much time with her, and I don't, I don't like her as much as I like Ellie and Joel. But still, by the end of it, ah, God, you got to you. The one thing I will say is that th- there's two bits at this game that I did say I don't want to do this, and I had to stop. I I paused it for about ten minutes. It was when Abby got back to Ellie, and you had the boss fight with her, and you're punching Ellie. Yeah. I did not yeah. want to do that. Because I still loved Ellie. I did not want to do that. Mm. And then when Ellie did it to Abby. Mm-hmm. It, it's amazing how that, like, when I started playing as Ellie again, it flipped me when I went. Because that whole section at the farm, I went, Ellie, don't. Don't go. Don't yeah. fucking go. I, I, Like, honey, I'm with you. I really am. I trust you. I believe in you. You can have a happy ending that, unfortunately... Joel didn't get, he didn't get his happy ending because he lost you before he died. And he was just about there. You get that. But if you leave, it's over. Yep. And that's what happened. I said the same thing. I sat there clutching my face and just, I couldn't believe it was happening. And they were a few of the moments I struggled with. Mm-hmm. the most story wise like i've I've thought back on them afterwards and i've kind of made my peace with them but they were the bits that were hardest to digest mm-hmm. watching tommy come back and say hey let's go kill her mm-hmm. in the moment when i'm playing the game i'm like this made this makes no sense i was just gonna ask gone you really, so much i was just gonna ask mm-hmm. you real quick did you like a lot of people think that that's out of character did you feel like it was out of character or do you I think it was because like with everything that he went through like with him letting uh, Jesse die and then Maria leaving him and Joel dying. Do you think that that mm. like ment- mentality is proper? Because a lot of people think yeah. that, that was out of character. Yeah, I've I've seen the out of character debate for that, and I it was my knee jerk reaction when I played the moment. Okay. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Right, you've all been through so much. Why can't you rest? Why can't you? But I've I've not been through that. Yeah, I've exactly. not been through that kind of turmoil. Mm. He probably you know he's he's disfigured for life. He's lost his wife. She's she's divorced him. Yeah. He's lost his brother. He probably feels guilty for a huge portion of the deaths, probably including Jesse. 100%. He, he, he is going to have as much hatred and resentment in him for Abby as Abby had for Joel, as Ellie has for Abby. Yep. There's there's just an endless... It's just endless. It's a circle of violence. I, I talked to you about this on the stream when you and you brought it up as well. That's that's all it is. And actually, I bring this... It's. I only say this just because of like where my mindset has been recently because I binge watched uh, six and a half seasons of fucking Vikings. Cheers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's it's that somebody kills somebody I know and love. I'm gonna go kill them. But then the same thing. It's that's what it is, and that's what the Last of Us yeah. world has become. Nobody, honestly, think about playing both games. Nobody gives a fuck about the infected except stay away from where we are. It's. Yeah. Like, nobody cares. It's all about the horrible people that show up wherever you are that can fuck things up. Yeah. And that's why this feels so real, because, it, you know, it's not it's it, not it, World War Z, where the, the zombies are making towers oh. <laughs> coming at us. We won't talk about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> different conversation. 
<laughs> we got like eight in the books, baby. It's uh, fine, yeah. <laughs> God, who wants to fucking listen to us talk about World War Z for an hour? I, me, but that's probably it. Well, if anybody says it in the comments, and Brit, I'm looking at you, baby. Uh, oh no, he but, will now. Like just, oh, just to. I shouldn't have called him out. I made a mistake. <laughs> you fucked up. I fucked up. But even so, it's like nobody cares about that infection. As I mean, like they do, but it's about just keeping them away from where they live. It's about the mm. horrible people. When you go to. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Santa Barbara? Yeah, Santa Barbara yeah. at the end when first you're Abby and then you're Ellie. Once again, you run into another group of people. Everywhere you go, there's hunters. Everywhere. Yeah. And let's be honest. This is how people would fuck. Like, I mean, you also have to remember, it's been 25 years since the outbreak. So, of course, yeah, well, you yeah. know, it's not it's not like, oh, people wouldn't react like this. After, I mean, I've seen Mad Max. All right. I know. <laughs> we know how people go they, in a post apocalyptic environment. They don't dress like they should, though, because, I mean, everybody's no, in the yeah. BDSM, and that's that's facts. It, yeah. I it's have facts. I have a gimp suit in my attic ready for the apocalypse. Just ready. Yeah. Everyone's got one. It's actually ready for you, but, uh, well, hey, when we meet, <laughs> there's only one way to meet. It's gimp suit, only the beard <laughs> shows, and you have to, then you'll be like, red beard? <laughs> I'm refunding my tickets to BeardCon. Ah, I'm not happy about this anyway. <laughs> 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 but on on that point that you made yes, about ahead, the kind of the ahead. circle of violence um it, it's it's almost ignorant to assume that <laughs> we should hate abby it, it's ignorant to just kind of have that really kind of closed-minded outset where you got mm -hmm. mindset sorry where you think okay well abby just killed joel mm -hmm. so she's the worst person in the world everyone has somebody that loves them everyone has people that care about them one death just sets off another path of revenge. So it's yeah. it's ignorant to assume that the only people that we should care about in the world of The Last of Us are the people that we played as. Yeah, We're only going to care because they're the people we've been exposed to, much like in the real world. I only care about the people I've been exposed to. Yeah. I care it's, about my exactly, friends, I care about my family. Oh, exactly, Ben. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that you know the people I don't know, you know my neighbours, the people that live down the street I've never spoken to, they have loved ones, they have turmoil, they have things that they kind of have to deal with on a daily basis it doesn't make their struggles any less meaningful because i haven't seen them right they're still going through stuff yeah you know and, and it's the same here it's the same in the video game that's why it's so it's why the writing's so good is because they challenge us to look at things from another person's perspective that we've only just met and it's it's very love thy neighbor it's, yeah. it's very yeah. kind of look at this person's story empathize with this person they've lost somebody too just because you lost someone you care about doesn't mean that their pain isn't any less meaningful right it's it's challenging shit, and, and it it, I think I can. Un I understand why it's polarizing. I understand why people didn't like it, and I do. I do honestly feel sorry for people that had waited is it seven years, seven years between the first and second, two thousand thirteen to twenty twenty. Yep. If if you've been sitting there waiting for this game for seven years, and then you didn't get the experience you wanted, I do empathize, yeah. and I do honestly feel bad because that sucks. You know, I was excited for it, but I went in not expecting anything. I yeah. went in just going, give me whatever you've made, right. show me your journey, show me that story, I'm ready for it. And and that worked out to my benefit. But obviously, some people went in with that mindset of 25 hours as Joel, baby, let's oh, yeah. go. Oh, oh, I was so ready, dude. I was just, I mean, I, I, mean, I knew that it was going to be Ellie's story. Like, I knew we were going to play as Ellie, but I was just like, I want the banter. I want Joel sitting back there watching my fucking back. I was so ready, dude. Yeah. Um, it was a much more somber game. There was there was less banter. I will say there was some wonderful moments, some really lovely moments, some really touching moments. You really had but it you was... really had to explore a lot. Like there, I agree mm. with you. There was that that first section of Seattle for sure. Mm. There was a lot of between her and uh, uh, oh my god, Dina, uh, Dina. Dina. Um, a lot of that because you had to you had to find the specific spots. Now I will never be the person who says you need more because God, I mean. Just in a video game development standpoint, I mean, if you ever watch anything of them on the behind the scenes, those guys just sit there and BS, yeah, as long as they possibly can, and then the direct, yeah. and then everybody decides right, when, come to on put, now. when to put it in and all that. Um, We're done now. <laughs> well, and Ben, here's why I think this is going to go a lot longer than we originally envisioned because this is ending the first question that I brought nice. up to you here. Um, <laughs> and if you don't care, I don't care. I hope people are strapped in because I don't give a fuck. I've released a four-hour <laughs> video on Rhino Vision before, and I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Hey, you strapped in? Uh, 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 not everything's going to be this long, because this, this, <laughs> this one was a heavy question, but the end of the, the question of, at, or not question, but the term of Abby's determination mm. is, 
the simple fact that after she killed Joel, what did it do? In terms of the the kind of the ripple effect, or no, 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 for her, what did it do for Abby? She achieved her mm. four and a half year goal. She had done it, and then do you remember her face after he was gone? That last yeah. swing, it, yeah, it did nothing. Did nothing. She 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 was she was level level headed enough. Mm-hmm to stop any more death exactly. in that room. Exactly. And that's the bit that I hooked on to. I latched on to that even from the start when I hated her. Uh, that that stuck with me was the fact that she kind of stopped her cronies yep. from dealing out any more death that didn't need to happen on that day. Yep. Touching upon this moment, I do need to address something. Go, go right ahead. Now, there's, 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 a, there's a really prominent theory I've seen doing the rounds. Okay online yeah which 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 kind of hits at why the writing is bad okay go ahead i i i've, I, <sighs> I've tried to avoid all of it just because the the angry stuff you know yeah <laughs> so one of the things i've heard about the writing being bad was that um joel and tommy in that scene are out of character because they never would have let themselves get into that situation uh, now my retort to that uh-huh, go ahead is that one they they were running away from a horde in a blizzard mm-hmm they, they, you know, there's, they're not going to... How do you expect them to act? If you think they've acted differently to how they would have acted, how would have they acted? Because I can see no other way they would have acted. They're right. not going to find this girl in the middle of a blizzard, in the middle of a, a horde chasing them, and just be like, we don't trust you, bang, or anything like that. Well, especially, they're going to just try and get her to safety. Especially of the fact that, like, even if Joel, for a very brief second, sees a young girl... I mean, Joel's what? 55? I mean, like, he's... He's an older man. He sees somebody Ellie's age. Yeah. Even for a brief second, like, come on, come on, let's go. He's going to help. Go ahead. It leads me on to the bigger point. Yep. People think that Joel and Tommy acted out of character because they gave their names when they got to the room. Okay. My retort to that point is, I think it's ignorant to assume Abby didn't know who Joel was. The second Joel picked Abby up, the expression in her face mm-hmm. told me she knew exactly who that man was. When she was on the floor yep. and the, the yep. infect is on top of her and Joel comes and he gets him off and she, he picks her up and they have a moment where they look at each other yep. and then the sound oh. goes kind of dull and then she, her face is just frozen. I forgot about that. She knew, she, she, she knew who, who that guy was. It didn't matter whether he gave his name. It didn't matter whether he got to that room and they said, who are you? And he said, oh, I'm, I'm Philip it Jimson. O- it only solidified it. Yeah. She already knew that was Joel. Yep, the she already the knew she was ready. Why did she have that gun pretty much ready to go before he even said his name? Yeah. She knew it was him. Yeah. Because you have to assume that there had been there had been recons, there had been missions to find out where this guy is. She would have had photos. She would have known what he looked like. They uh, will have known what he looked like. Well, well, so from what you gathered from the flashback, she had no idea who what what, what I agree with you on like that she knew it was him. Like in her heart, she knew it mm. was him. Um, the solidifying of the the name was there. The fact, the, the, the way that I look at it was, uh, with what you're saying is with Joel and Tommy, especially Joel, the biggest thing that people seem to forget is that Joel's vulnerability went from, in The Last of Us, the first game, from being this hard edge, everything's bad, to we're chill. I'm living in Jackson. That's, that's it's a li- nice place. It lit- Like, living in Jackson and trying to take care of Ellie playing guitar on the porch every night and trying to get Ellie back to what they had changed him as a person you see that in the flashbacks you see mm. that every time when she's just a little bit older and you go through the fucking hotel when you're going to get the guitar string it's still Joel just trying to connect with the, an older Ellie and yeah. so the fact is is that his acceptance is more just like I don't need to not every single person that comes to me, I need to destroy, mm. you know? And, and, and again, circumstances apply a horde's chasing after you. Well, here's a third fucking body. Mm. Like, I mean, yeah. e- like <laughs> maybe a dumb example, but even if Joel didn't know who David was from the first one, all of a sudden a horde's chasing after you, David, here's a fucking gun. Yep. Because let's shoot some zombies because let's, let's shoot some infected. And then afterwards, Maybe I kill you. 
But even so, yeah. it's and, and that's it, whoa, what a hot topic. I I can understand where people mm. are coming from with that. I definitely so do. can I. Yeah, hundred percent. Really it just I, I remember playing it that first time, and, and obviously as a as a player and as a viewer of it, you're aware of who the both who the, both of those characters are. Yep. At that point, they kind of haven't fully established her intent. Yep. But it was very clear to me in the way that moment's framed that she knew who that man was that picked her up. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I've not I've not played it a second time and I will kind of um, you pick, look you at it a little you, more in with, depth. With what you say, like as I, because I've just, I just, the last thing I did was go through Abby's section when I picked it back up mm-hmm. again before I went back to other games. Uh, I, I 100% see what you're saying. And, and she's shaken. She, yeah. she, you can tell she's shaken and because so of the funny. chase she just ensued. And she's but so ready. When they're moving through the building and Tommy's kind of, uh, they're opening the doors and they're, she's not engaging in those conversations she, she's very quiet and it's almost like she's just like i've just fucking hit the jackpot i've just stumbled across yeah everything i've been looking for this is the moment and, and it's you you just almost see it drain out of her when she's when he's picked up when she yeah. picks him up so i just wanted to touch on that because it's kind of prevalent to that moment we're talking about but yeah i find it interesting that people read that in that way um and kind of thought that it was joel's fault mm-hmm. that he'd got himself in that situation and i think in that kind of world in any kind of world when your time's up your time's up it would have been nice to have a hero's death i know lots of people want him to have a hero's death but people don't get hero's deaths people don't get kind of big grand speeches people just fucking die um yeah (laughs) when the time comes that's been the whole thing of the last of us it's a brutal fucking world it really is and it comes it comes down to the fact that yeah i would have liked something like that as well but you know what Mm. i didn't get it and yeah, I'm still I think, I think cosplay yeah. older Joel when conventions reopen, baby. I'm getting that cup, do it. Gray beard <laughs> is doing it. One hundred. You're gonna cover yourself in blood and kind of put prosthetics so oh, that your heads. Oh, I mean, maybe one day I'll just carry around a golf club. <laughs> zombie, zombie Joel. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, here, it's, we'll, it's interesting. We'll we'll move on a little bit because, like I said, this is gonna go longer than we originally thought. But that I I want to, I want to have these conversations. I I do. I don't want to limit ourselves too heavily. Just for the mm. reason we also did talk twenty minutes beforehand, so we're we're still doing okay. Um, but the next thing that I'm going to bring up, so that way we can at least continue this forward with some type of structure, so your OCD doesn't go nuts. <laughs> um, Abby's crew not wanting to do this, like mm. within the flashbacks, and even when Owen talks to her afterwards, and how he throws her words back at her right before the sex scene that everybody fucking hates. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, the fact is that none of them wanted to go and do this. They wanted her to just move and, and, and not just move on. They wanted her to just be like, look, yes, it, we get it. It's what a horrible thing. Your dad died. I mean, and I, I don't, I, I can sympathize because of things that happened in my life. We're not going to go into that. Uh, but for the reason of just like, they just like, can we just live our lives? Because this could potentially put us in. Even more danger. Joel was a one-man mm-hmm. army. If you knew anything about him, which you know people say they do online, you don't fucking go up against Joel. <laughs> the man <laughs> took down the fireflies. <laughs> but but he took him by surprise. He did take him by surprise. Um, but even so, uh, what do you have to say about like the way like? Uh, and I'll even open it up a little bit more to like how Abby's crew like. What did you feel for them? Did you feel like they were underutilized? Did you feel like they were? Uh, like just not part of the story enough for you to give a shit about them in, in, mm. like that's yeah it's it's, it's uh, hard yeah. to say because for me and i'll just say it quickly the only person i re- two people actually that i only really cared about was owen and just a little bit of manny that's it mm. i didn't I, like, yeah like and and that's not saying that mel's character was bad or mm. i am spacing on anybody else's names uh, uh like nora it's just like we didn't get a lot of them so like the sympathization there wasn't there for me yeah it's the same argument that people have with abby mm-hmm. when you see abby at the start you hate her because you haven't had you haven't spent any time with her so characters i i really sympathized with owen yeah but i think that's natural because he had the most screen time of everyone in that crew yes, yes. um and you could tell that that moment specifically the joel moment kind of broke him uh, and sent him on a path of realizing that he needed to make his way away from that crew and find somewhere in the world where he can just start his life, I just kind that. of settle down and have a life. Um, 
Mel probably had the next amount of screen time. She, I never clicked with her character. Um, she didn't because they didn't lot. show me no they didn't show me enough of her as a as a human being for yeah. me to empathize she was i understand that she was pregnant lady that's really all she was and i, I hate to put she, it that yeah. way but uh... she was if they'd made it a little more clear that she was quite clearly aware of what was going on between mm-hmm. abby and owen mm-hmm. that would have driven her hatred towards abby home more because at the end when she turns around she tells abby she's a terrible person and all this yeah, stuff yeah. at that point i'd already started to sympathize with abby because i'd seen what she'd been through so sure. that just made me hate mel yeah, so fuck like, you, like, mel. shut up <laughs> yeah what are you want about but i think if they'd spent more time showing us her and showing us how she was aware of what was going on because she must have been aware sure because i mean it was it was pretty damn obvious it was pretty obvious yeah but again it, it's a game that has so many moving parts and so many kind of players that someone's going to get dropped by the wayside and you're not going to get all those perspectives and I mean, stories. Then you're, then you're having a 45 hour fucking last of us game, which to be honest would have been too much. <laughs> get to the end of, you know, day three as Abby and then it goes back to day one and you're playing as Mel and then it does oh! it again. And then it's day one as a <laughs> would have been the most tedious thing ever. So well, you kind today of just... we go to the OBGYN. Oh, this will be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, you have to just take it at face value and fill in those blanks. You have to kind of just assume those characters know those things, and it, it does take a bit of a leap of faith from the player. Um, but again, I like that kind of storytelling. I don't need my hand held the entire time. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to fill in some blanks. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I didn't particularly care about any of that crew. Um, I, again, Manny. He had a little bit of characterization. He seemed like one of the only characters that just wasn't impacted by the Joel moment. He, yeah. He, it felt he, he like liked a bit of death. The, the, my favorite part about Manny's character is that it felt like they were building him up to be something like even more, and then mm. bam, gone. And I went, Dead. "Oh fuck, Manny!" <laughs> same. Like, and I, I, I had the same reaction. I love that. I love that reaction because it's just like I wanted. I wanted to know more about Manny. I wanted to be with him, and then it's just like, "Well, now he's gone." Oh, but it's gone now. Just, I, 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 I just. Just completely like different but I had, I, had this, I had the same reaction with Jesse yeah I exactly the same reaction with Jesse it was like I was loving Jesse and I was just like you're cool man like what's up you yeah. you, you saved me like let's go do it and then bam oh f- damn it they, they tease us with all these interesting characters and as we start to kind of like them and we start to get to know them they take them away well that's and that's it's storytelling it's, that's writing a, dude you gotta I, 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 I'm not saying that yeah. you always have to kill characters off but it's done in such a way where you're like man, I really wish I could have learned more about him. Yep. It's it's a tried and true technique. It, it, yeah. it's, it's utilized across across the medium. I mean, it, I kept... Comp- this game felt very much, very, very much like The Walking Dead. Oh, when The Walking Dead good, is y- yes. on... When The Walking Dead's on its game, when The Walking Dead is, you know, firing on all cylinders, because I know the TV show isn't often firing on all cylinders. I stopped the, after season five. Yeah. Yeah. the novelization the graphic novel that obviously became came first before yes. the tv show is always firing on all cylinders it was always a solid solid yep. effort it felt like they drew a huge amount of inspiration from that because just as you'd start to love a character they'd be like i oh, don't get too attached gone right they take because that's the world yeah. that's the world they live in nothing certain in that world you, you could you could just There's walk no around the corner armor in this show or in this in no. this thing and people can say that tommy has plot armor Tommy really got the shit end of almost everything. <laughs> You're the shit end of plot armor. I mean, if you can have plot I, armor, you may as well just fuck. He lost an eye. He lost his wife. He lost his brother. Ellie fucking hates him. Nobody in Jackson wants him to be around. Tommy's life sucks. He may as well sucks. be dead. Tommy's life well, this sucks. Is the, this, is, this is the thing. He may as well be dead. And people say he's got plot armor because he's still alive at the end. But what kind of life is that that he has at the exactly. end? Exactly. You know, it's, and, it's not a fulfilling and life. I love, he's lost and everything. And I love Tommy. And Jeffrey Price, mm. you're fucking great as Tommy. But I, no. Uh, mm. It sucks. The only the only comment I've got again, yep, go um, just from things I've seen um, regarding Abby's crew, is um, people people here uh, lashed out of the story again because of Mel being pregnant and going on one of the missions. She went out on one of the routine sweeps. I wasn't happy said, about it for the reason that like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm the same, and I think that you're meant to have that reaction. I was playing right. it, going, why the why the f- why are you on this fucking mission? Yeah, go home. But she addresses it and the characters address it in the game. Yep. Which is why I kind of, it didn't feel to me like bad writing. It didn't feel like they were just putting a pregnant woman in harm's way for the sake of shock value or anything sure. like that. Yeah. And somewhat, I did read somewhere that someone said they were, they were patrolling territory that they already owned. So there was no threat. 
They didn't expect yeah, a threat. I mean, I mean, that's that's yeah. <laughs> it just... wasn't like they were going outside the walls. It wasn't like they were going to seraphite territory. Yeah, they were just expl- they were just going out on a little scavenge, make sure everything's good in the territory they already owned. And she even addressed. She was like, oh, "I feel fine to do this. I feel fine to be here." Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I it didn't do enough for me to care about her as yeah, a character. I, I I hate to say it, but unfortunately, like at that point, I feel like you're you're starting to care about Abby even a little bit, like when you first like are with her. And at that point, oh excuse me, get a little drunk. Uh, <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're it's, just like, "Fuck you, Mel." <laughs> it's natural to care about the character you play as. If you're holding a controller in your hands and you press I mean, forward and someone moves, I, I, you care I, about that is person. There, is there a video game where you play and you're like, "I don't like the character I'm playing as"? I mean, it's not like well. This is that game for a lot of people, oh, for, I guess. And that's the interesting so. part. I guess so. I, I, and that's, it's, and it's, how it's, different is that? It's something I've never come across before. I've no. never known a game where people play it and go, I fucking hate this character. Could, could I, you, I hate this person I'm playing as. Could you imagine? How do you play as a character you hate? Do you, could, how do you shoot the enemies? Do you just yeah. run into them and just let them you spend <laughs> do 60, their you thing? You spend 60 bucks so that either Abby or Ellie can just walk into death and be like, I'm done. It's interesting. It's whether cool. whether it's your experience or not, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting. And that's why this conversation will continue. So, dude, we could do a whole nother one of these in like in like a year. Still talking about Retrospective. This Retrospective, which which we'll probably do. That's episode twenty two of When Beards Collide. <laughs> uh, season two. Season two. Um well here, <laughs> let's move on a little bit more because let me check our time code here. Uh one at- hour and th- 40 seconds we're uh we're at an uh according to my thing we're at an hour and 16 but we did talk a little bit uh beforehand um so let's let's move ahead a little bit because like i said we'll go a little bit long that's fine i'll keep i'll keep saying that because this is this is great and personally i'm loving just talking with somebody about it Mm. because it's nice just to speak about it i gotta get my emotions out bro uh (laughs) yeah so i I think as as a interest interestingly i think that might be a reason why so many people have had such an aggressive reaction. I think the reason I didn't have an aggressive reaction is because of the manner in which I played the game and I streamed it. Sure. So after every Ooh. big moment, oh my god, That's after my every phone, big, <laughs> <laughs> after every big moment that kind of hit me emotionally, I took the time to stop playing. I put the controller down, mm-hmm. and I just spoke to the people in the chat that I had, yeah, and we yeah. kind of discussed it, and I, and I, I got the time you, to kind of ruminate on it. I loved when you did that. And I think it made the experience different for me. I think if I just sat in my room and I smashed that game out 25 hours, did it in you know a couple of days, I would probably come away with a little bit of a different more bitter. Yeah, because I wouldn't be able to speak it out with people and kind of get people's perspectives and talk and talk. And because I've been able to talk, it has changed that game. So yeah, I think I think yeah. talking about this game helps. That's where it was with me because like I mean I had my wife there, you know, and she she loves The Last of Us. She has a Firefly tattoo, you know, here like one of her favorite games she she was not gonna she actually wasn't gonna let me play it without her because i was going to do it because i just wanted to get through it um, <laughs> i love it but however my my wife is not i get very emotional she does not so like every mm. moment like oh god after joel's death as much as i was freaking out she was just like good story beat and i went are you fucking out of your mind <laughs> I, what oh god I'm, I'm outside i'm like fuck i'm smoking and i'm just like fuck it <laughs> that's going nuts dude and, and she's, she's like oh she's like good story no that was good like she's like and and my favorite part and like i like we didn't we don't really talk about it too much because she doesn't like the fact that i talk too much i love my wife <laughs> i talk too much it's my thing um but the fact is is that she brings up good points where it's just it's continuously like i mean story-wise like what else what else is gonna drive ellie forward at this point so much like sure you can think about it in a way that yeah, she just had this, like, she's known Dina for four years, and she's just having this romantic reaction. If it was Dina... It wouldn't be the same. Eh? Like, I love Dina right I, I wouldn't start. care. I wouldn't care at Because I didn't see her. Yeah. No. I mean, it was just, it, 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 everybody thought that, and it was just like, how do you get her to this journey? And also, like, even if you don't want a story about revenge, what else do you do? But that's a part mm. at the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> um... So then here, the two more big things I want to bring up that we're going to talk about here real quick, okay? We're, Sounds good. So there, there really is just like three more topics that I really want us to go over that I think will clear this up, okay? Um, uh, the big, the next big one that I want, I would love to hear your thoughts on for sure. Uh, why this mirrors Ellie's journey. 
and I and like I said uh, at the beginning of this is not just Abby and Ellie mirroring in this game, but how Abby's journey mirrors Ellie's from the first game. Damn, son, that's a question and a half. Hey, man, I mean, we're not going to be sitting here, you know, for two hours probably now at this point if it's not going to be fucking rough shit. I've been waiting to do this for three weeks. <laughs> so, I mean, Abby and Ellie's mirror in terms of story in the second game is is exceptionally clear. I think even to the people that hate the game, they would, they would look at it and go, yep. Yeah, they're on the same journey. It's 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 a typical revenge story, you know. One begets the other, begets the other, begets the other, and it just continues, and it and it never ends. And they just continue to. Oh my god, he's opening the what? whiskey. What? It's not whiskey. It is. Whiskey. Is it whiskey? It is whiskey. That's fine. It's whiskey. Yeah. It, it it's just an, a never ending stream of, of of death. So, I think if you, I think if you enjoy one, I think if you enjoy one person's story in this game, or you relate to one of their stories in the game. You should be able to relate to the other. Yeah, I think it's a matter of perspective. I mean, again, I'll, I'll touch back on the fact that you've spent more time with Ellie. You've had the twelve hours that you had in The Last of Us One, and then you had seven years on top of that. And you waited, so you've had you yep. seven years and twelve hours with Ellie, mm -hmm. and then you've had ten hours with Abby. So Abby, the scales are tipped hugely in Ellie's favor. But if you just lay the stories out side by side, it's the same journey. Yep. They both lost a father figure. One lost her actual father, and one lost a father that was the closest thing she has in that brutal world. And neither of them got to say goodbye. Neither of them got closure on that relationship, you know. And it was a very, again, a very different situation. I think Abby and her her dad were on better terms than Joel and Ellie were at the end of their relationship. But neither of them got to say goodbye, and they both. They both went on that same journey. The differences in their journeys really were that we didn't see Abby's journey up to the point she succeeded. Right. We just saw the point in which she su she succeeded. So we don't know how much, if any, death and destruction she caused on the way to that point. I, now you can oh, assume. Wow. Oh wow, that's sorry. You that's, can assume. <laughs> no, that's you can assume there was point. none, yeah. but you could also assume there was a lot. Yeah. You could assume there was a lot of false attempts on. Is this Joel? Kill him. I mean, there, had, you could there assume. had to have been, right? Oh my God, I never even thought about that. So a lot of people said that she is less guilty because she got what she wanted and stopped. But we only saw her get what she wanted. We didn't see what came before that. With Ellie, we're dragged through the mud with her. So we see her kill everybody. You know, wow. we see her kill everybody. She, For each person she kills, she set off another revenge quest right there and then. Because each one of those characters that are near and dear to Abby not only inform her to come back to try and kill Ellie, but they're informing other people. You know, it's a whole organization. The WLF is huge. Yeah. All those characters that Ellie's kind of infiltrated and killed will have loved ones within that 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 in that setup. So it, it, it appears that Ellie in this game is framed to be the more ruthless character. You know, she feels like she's more feels like she is more to blame. By the time you get to the end, by the time you and that's like a heavy thing to understand. By the time you get to the end and you're looking at it, I personally was like, I just wanted Abby to sail off into the sunset. Yep. I could see she was done. You know, I could see she just wanted a peaceful life, and I wanted that for Ellie as well. But Ellie made the choice to continue. She fucked it she, up. She could have stopped. There was a point at which she could have stopped, but she couldn't because she still hadn't made her peace with losing Joel. She still hadn't made her peace with the fact that she never got to reconcile with Joel. So she continued to push that agenda. God, that cutscene. Oh my God. Terrible. Fucking wrecked me, but dude. Their stories are basically exactly the same. Yes. You kind of have to assume that some people will have fallen to Abby's venge, reven vengefulness. Um, before the events of The Last of Us 2. You kind of have to assume that. She'd had four years training to get to that point. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of, you'd be ignorant, I guess, to think that there was no bloodshed up to that point. Yeah, I, I, honestly, that's not, that. like I said before, that's not something that I actually thought about before. Because, like, it's not like it's a short trek from Seattle to there. And we've no. seen the fact that every place you go that has, I mean, you, you have to assume that every place has some type of faction of people defending yeah. their home. Yeah, yep. you're right. I would actually love to play. I, I, as much as I would love a Joel DLC of just like hanging out, being Joel, playing pool, and drinking coffee for like eight hours. Ding, 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 yeah, totally, totally. Like that. <laughs> I just want to be sitting in a fucking like fake Starbucks of Joel drinking coffee and be like, I can do this. 
But, I'd play that game. But now I kind of I would love to see a little bit more on that Abbey side of things. As much as I don't want, I, they said they don't have any DLC planned, and I yeah. don't think that we need it. But I didn't mm-hmm. think we needed it left behind either. But mm. uh, but now I kind of want to see Abby's journey from Seattle to Jackson, and whether or not it is even like just bathed in blood on the way to get there of figuring out who people were because they already knew that where he was. Like they said that in the thing. Yeah. But I would love to see that that journey of just being like, this is how we got here and what it took for us to get here. Cause I think that it would be an interesting thing to see. It could, it could add to Abby, uh, just a little bit more. Mm. Like it, it wasn't just the fact that we got the info and we made our way to Jackson. It's like, well, we still had to go through some shit, even if it was mm. just infected, you know, it doesn't, yeah. it could be interesting. I don't think it's necessary, but it's not necessary. No, but I think if, if we had that concrete information of what she went through, yeah, it would swing us one of two ways. We'd either see her, basically determined but not killing innocents mm-hmm. not killing people that weren't joel Ooh, until she got to joel and then be, killed joel that's and then stopped it. there's there's that gameplay loop we were talking about earlier you have the option you kill people or you don't this is where it would work in a storytelling aspect as Abby, the pacifist like, role we could we could go through this whole section and not take out a single soul and just move on by him yep and then you get to joel and then that would canonically make oh, God, her quest great. to joel a lot more focused and a lot more righteous yes. because he was the man she needed to kill and he's the only one she killed oh, man, and it was only brought back into <sighs> the violence because of what Eb- ellie did so it's, it's, it's interesting because at, at its foundation at its core abby lost someone and went okay the person took the person away i'm gonna go and kill them ellie then loses someone mm-hmm. and we get to see it so we see her go okay well i'm gonna go and kill that person but she doesn't just go and kill that person she goes and kills that person's friends. She goes and kills... Yeah. She she highlights them all. She's got a map. She's got their pictures. Bang, 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 bang. Everyone. It's, it's, it's vindictive at that point. And it's, that's the big difference between their characters being mirrored. It is a mirrored journey. They both want the same thing. They both want revenge for a lost loved one. But they're both shown in very different ways. Yep. Abby's is very much... Her, her side of the story is, is, isn't... The part you play as is very... It's not a vengeful side of the story. She's, you know, she's going about her business until you get to day three and you discover, you start discovering the deaths. I think you actually discover some day two. I can't remember one hundred percent. No, because that, that was. I think it's day favorite. three, isn't it? Yeah, that was my favorite part about Abby's story because, like, when you're playing as Ellie the whole time and you're looking for Abby, I'm sitting there going like, "So she's running, like she knows that Ellie's here, and she's like trying to hide and like." But then she's not. Away. Yeah. But then you get to her story and you're like, she has no fucking idea that you're even here, because yeah. yeah. It's not until actually it's day so on day two she finds out that there's a trespasser. That's all because Manny says yep. it, and that's all he yep. says. Then you go to the island and do this whole thing, and then you come back, and then that's when Mel and Owen are dead, and she's like, mm-hmm. "What the hell has been going on?" And I love yeah. that. I I because the whole it. time I'm like, "Where the fuck is Abby? Why is she running? Come out, bitch! Let's go!" <laughs> and then you play the whole section, and you're like. She had no idea this whole time. So as far as I was taking that, it was it was Ellie doing all this vengeful shit, possibly thinking in her mind, because that's where my mindset was too, is like, I fucking killed your friends. I did it. Come come find me. Let's go. No idea. And Abby's just like Whatever. I've got then, my own shit going on. And then, yeah, then when she finally shows up, because it's it's that's why when Abby shows up and the emotion that she's dealing with, it's not that she's dealt with this past three days. She's dealt with it in the past couple hours. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. She, she 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 finds the man she loves, a pregnant woman who you know they weren't friends, but she even, knew her. Even so, <laughs> even so. dead on the floor. She starts connecting the dots. She's she's living, reliving that moment where her dad was taken away from her all over again, and she goes straight, oh yeah, straight to the source what a f- oh, in that moment. So powerful. So the, the the stories are definitely mirrored, but it's it's difficult because they're we're showing very different journeys, yep. and it, we we miss we're missing huge parts of Abby's journey. We've seen everything about Ellie's journey. You know, we've seen all of last I would love to see more. I would love to see more, yeah. but like I said before, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. And I feel I don't like, think it's necessary. I feel like if you were to come out with it now, it would be <sighs> It would almost feel like a knee jerk reaction. Yeah. And it's, almost, and, and it's almost like trying to take those people who don't like the story to be like, well here. 
hit. Like, like play, play his her some more. Like play play this, and you might like it more. And it's like, eh, we don't need to do that. But I don't think don't I don't to. I don't think Druckmann would do that. I don't think Naughty Dog would do that. They're like, I, I honestly I think besides the awful shit that's been said to some of them, I think most of them are just going like, oh whatever, fuck you. <laughs> it's out now. It's yeah. out in the world. It is what it is. But yeah, I think I think that there's certainly their stories are mirrored in the second game. Um, but some things are left as an unknown, which is good because it encourages debate like this, and we can talk about okay, well, what was Abby's journey like beforehand? Blah blah blah. In terms of Ellie's story and journey in the first game, here we go. <laughs> it's difficult yeah. to kind of place Ellie's journey in the first game. You know, she's very young, she's very naive, and we see her grow into a kind of a warrior. We see her grow from a young, non-street smart girl to by the end, you know, she can hold her own. You know, she lives out in that wilderness on her own while Joel is incapacitated and she she pulls through and she pulls him through so by the end of the game she's a very different character to, to when she started abby we, we skip that because i think that journey would have been in the period of time between her losing her dad and this this game and that's that kind of growth what, that's actually what i was getting at is the yeah. fact the fact is is that ellie's journey in this is the one abby already has been through yeah so and, okay, so and maybe maybe my wording is not exactly the proper way to do it, but the journey that Ellie went through in The Last of Us Part One is very possible that Abby already went through. Yeah, very similar her growth and everything like that. But the fact is, is that when you meet Abby, uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, definitely. Now that I'm thinking back on it, my wording was incorrect. But even so, no, no, it's fine. Abby's journey you get at the end of the Revenge. Ellie's mm-hmm. going through the Revenge. At the end of Last of Us 2, Ellie reaches the point where Abby is at the start of Last of Us 2. Yes, yes, but yes. That's, that's the more moment so is very like that. different. That's more yeah, but the moment's very different because obviously in that moment she had a choice to end Abby's life or end the violence. And she, she made a, a different question. choice than what Abby made. So. Here's a question for you. In that last moment, in the, va- mm. the last fight scene between Ellie and Abby, when Ellie is choking Abby underneath the water, do you think Ellie was the stronger character for letting go and not killing her? Or no? Or anything in between? I think she was I, the stronger character at that point in you time. You think so? You could tell that even, Abby even, had even, given even up. Even after every other person that she's killed, considering Abby had only killed hmm. Joel. That's, that's, well, that's, that's the, the debate. debate. That's the debate, right? That's the debate. <laughs> Because it it, it, oh. it took all that murder to get to that point where she was able to let go. She yeah. had to kill all those people. But then you could argue, I guess, that the the catharsis in Abby killing the man who was responsible was a far greater kind of relief. Ellie had to kill multiple people that weren't actively and she still got fully responsible. It was never and she still got them. no relief. It was never about them. It was always about Abby. But she wouldn't do it. Because of that, and, and and another thing that's very controversial at the end about the fact that we went on this whole fucking revenge journey and we don't get to kill her, it's like Ellie. I'm gonna blow you. I'm gonna blow your mind. Go ahead, go ahead, blow my fucking mind, dude. I think she didn't do it. Okay, have you seen the theories about the ending? Ah, uh, I've kind of avoided it because I, I I I was honestly waiting to just talk to somebody about it, so I haven't read okay. anything about it. Please blow my so, way. I think she didn't kill Abby to leave the door open for her to still have a normal life. I think she knew if she killed Abby at that moment, there was no going back to Mm. Dina, to the baby, to any kind of normality. Because how can you walk back on that and say, I've done it. My hands are still covered in blood. You know, it's the circle of violence continues. At the end of The Last of Us, and and my reading of it when I first played it was very much the somber game. You're playing as Ellie. You walk back to the to the farmhouse it's all abandoned you pick up the guitar you play the guitar you place it on the windowsill and you leave my first reading of that scene was that that was the first time she'd gone back yep. after the moment yeah but oh oh where did she go after she left the island okay you mean you mean santa barbara santa or... barbara santa barbara oh, where I... did she go after she left the island well, i figured she because... came back well, but where to because she's fully back in her civilian clothes. She's cleaned up. She's wearing the bracelet. Oh. She's wearing the bracelet 
that Dina gave her at the end of the game when she's playing the guitar. But she wasn't wearing it when she left. She wasn't wearing it when she left. Holy I fuck. think she'd gone back to Jackson. I'd like to think this. Okay. Reconciled with Dina. And then that moment where she goes back to the farm wasn't to see, oh, Dina's gone, but was just a goodbye to Joel because she knew the guitar was there. I don't You're think it was about... You're going to cry. <laughs> I think that moment in the end... Because if you take his... Where did she go to put her civilian clothes back on? Where did she... she it, God, okay. When, oh, I first, yeah. when, I first, when I first played it, I saw it and went, oh my God, that's so, that's so depressing. She's lost everything. She hasn't got she's Dina. She hasn't got the baby. Everything. She hasn't got Joel. She's, she just lives in this life of isolation now. But if you, if you kind of really think about it, and because and, and, The Last of Us is presented to us like a very kind of real story with real people, where did she go to get cleaned up? Because she turns up, she doesn't look bad. You know, she's yeah. you've got to assume period of time's passed. She she looks pretty put together. You she's can, clean. You she's can clean yourself on the way back and such like that. Maybe someone was in her backpack. But yeah, I, I I get what you're saying. Holy. She fuck. doesn't look as kind of emaciated. She looks like she's fixed herself up. I'm need she more. goes back. The 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 bracelets back on. Uh, it, it's it's kind of hopeful. Shit. I don't think we'll ever. I don't think we'll ever get an answer directly from Naughty no, Dog. But no, no, it's kind of hopeful, and it, it's left. It reminded me a lot of Inception in the way that you can you can interpret that in whatever way you want. Yes. You can look at it and go, yes. "She's stuck in the dream, or yes. she's back in reality." Blah blah blah. So but yeah. I like to read that as, you know, she didn't kill Abby, and that was her gateway to go back to Jackson, yeah. reconcile, build a better life, and then go to the farm to say her final goodbye and just make her peace with Joel. Holy fuck! And then still have somewhere to go back to afterwards. Big B, you just you did just blow my mind a little bit because that that. That kind of changes. Well, that actually brings more to what I was going to bring up to you next. And it wasn't one of our talking points, real quick. But whew, holy crap! Mm. I, I and like... it would also give good endings to both characters because yes. obviously, after you roll credits, the um, menu screen changes. Yeah, and that's them making it to Katarina Island. That was confirmed. <laughs> so um, you've got Abby and Lev making it yeah. to Katarina Island, and and you know maybe Ellie. Reconciling with Dina, living a normal life, and Dina. getting her final farewell to Joel. Yeah. Now, because the one thing that I want, and, and I wanted this to be a little bit more brief, because we're going pretty goddamn long here. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't think that we were going to be able to hold to an hour, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. If people want to watch, they can watch. I don't give a shit. Um, Fuck it. But the fact is, like, with especially with what you just said, the fact is, is that as many people as are mad about what happened to Joel, he is still the center of this story. Mm. Everything that happens in this game is because of what Joel has done, what Joel mm -hmm. would have done. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, there's a reason why the flashbacks at the points of the game that they appear at means so much to the overall story. And even those moments when you're trying to tell Ellie to stop doing what you're doing, I always felt that it was, for me anyway, it was Joel saying, stop, mm -hmm. stop. Because I yeah. go, I go back to that line about why this, why this game is still all about Joel as much as it is about Ellie and Abby, but why it's still all about him, even though he's in the game for like 4% of it <laughs> is that fucking line when they are in the space shuttle mm -hmm. i do okay he looks mm -hmm. at her and what that means to him and the emotional journey that you go from the first last of us game from him caring about her so much that he'll kill everyone to protect her to that next moment that you see in that chronological storyline of bringing it to that moment that he did so much to find this place to bring yeah. her here to to understand how much she wants oh, she wanted to be an astronaut that's a throwaway line at the end of the game of the I first know. one and to have that whole moment where he's just watching her listen to this he got a fucking tape for her and he just looks at her and is like I do okay and she says yes and then the turnaround of just like you can see it in in Troy Baker's performance and the character animations and everything moving forward and every other flashback, you know, 
I, I honestly could feel Joel in the next flashback when you go to it and they're going to get the guitar string. And, and you know, he, she's, he's, she's with Tommy and just like the way that he reacts to everything. Mm. I always felt that he was just like, it's one step away from her finding out what's going on. Yeah. He was that. filled with guilt. Filled the, with the, guilt. The, when you play the game a second time, and I haven't started it yet, but when you play the game a second time, it's, it's going to be a completely different experience because you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But the game opens on that cold open of him tuning his guitar and telling Tommy what he did. I'm going to sing that, that, that song for everybody uh, one of these days. Uh, you should. I, I'm actually going to sing it for Nick at Gamer Jude. Hi. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely bastard. Uh, be a beautiful moment. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, it, it starts with him kind of getting that off his chest and confessing it to someone. And then every single flashback, we we see you're right. He, you can see it in his eyes. He's he's just waiting for the moment. Waiting. Because he knows. He knows she's not an idiot. She knew he knows together. she's street she smart. She always knew. She always fucking knew. We, me the look you, she gives him at the end of the first game. Yeah. I mean, she knew then. I mean, you and me had this conversation before the game released. And, like, we were, we were, we were texting or, well, tweeting each other on Twitter about it. Just, like, what are the repercussions going to be of this? Mm -hmm. And we did get that answer, and it yeah. and it ruined them. She found mm -hmm. out. She went back without his permission, not that she needed it. But you and me are done. Two years is yeah. all. That, 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 that's what that's what's so heartbreaking to me. They got two years of happiness. Yeah. And then, oh god! And the biggest thing that fucking kicked my ass, and I've been waiting to talk about this for sure, is that goddamn E three trailer of the barn scene. The whole game, I'm playing it, and I'm going... When's the barn scene? When's the barn scene? Like, they They've cut the about barn it. scene. It happened, bef it happened before the game. That'll happen. So surprised so, by how late that came. Are you telling me that this this was made for E3? Get fucked. Mm -hmm. This was made for E3, and then the end of the game. Oh, my God. When it started playing, I put my controller down. I sat back, and I went, don't do this. Oh, yeah. my God. And then you get to see the rest of the scene. When Joel comes in and pushes him, and she yells at him, mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until like what another five or so minutes again when you got the, another flashback of them on the porch. I I mean, chef chef's kiss, kiss. Chef's perfect. Kiss. I legit like, and my wife was making fun of me because this is what she does. Tears running mm. down my face because it could have been super easy for them at that point to overstep the mark and give us that scene but have them reconcile yeah. so that we let, we finished the game with a warm fuzzy feeling but they, but they didn't. didn't they just dangled the hope that she was gonna it was the she first was, night in two years she, she was open to the thought of maybe forgiving him at some point and that was enough to reduce oh him to tears fucking god and that changes the whole beginning of the game when you replay it because she's talking about like i was thinking of having joel over and it seemed like it was so natural mm -hmm. and fine and that everything was like it's okay like yeah, i'm an edgy teenager but that's whatever. a big moment big moment oh my god i was thinking of having joel over we we haven't been talking we haven't been okay no. we're not good i was thinking about it so she was oh. finally ready when we start that story she's finally ready to make steps to mend everything they've been through and then he's taken away. I, God, it, it killed me playing it again. Like, starting that over again. And when she's talking about that, going through that first section where you just get to wander around, I was like, yeah. fuck, because the last thing that they said to each other was, and, and it was a little bit of warm, was, I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive you, but I'd like to try. I'd like to try. Yeah, and she says, I'll see, I'll see you around, and then she leaves, and... Fuck! <laughs> Excuse that's it. my and that, language, that's, but fuck! <laughs> but that's what drives the whole game, oh, is that she whole never... Because she loved him, even even when she didn't, you know? Yeah. Even when she couldn't forgive him, she still loved him. She understood. She understood. All right. All right. <laughs> We're going to try to get through some more things here. And at this point, I don't, who, fuck it, who cares anymore? No one's going <laughs> to no watch this. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh, hold on. Give me one second. I got to change my battery pack. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey, I, like I said, man, at this point, we've already gone so long. If people actually sit through this whole goddamn thing, good on them. Redness, I'm looking at you. I'll give them a uh, redness. <laughs> It'd be spitting fire at this point. Good. Good. 
I, 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 I remember when you were saying during your stream that I do kind of wish that we would have, uh, I mean, I wanted it to just be you and me, but getting somebody else who had a differenti differentiating mm. opinion would have been a good idea. But you could talk for you know, 24 hours if you had well, I mean, all that, three opinions in the room together. Well, I mean, that's also, that's also kind of our problem, you know? We, we said we'd stick to an hour, and yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, if you want to stop, man, we could try to end it, but I mean, we got some good <laughs> shit going on here, so... And I, what, else do we, what else do we need to cover? What else th do we need th to... There's, there's literally, there's for me, at least in my notes, there's two more big things that I want to cover. And that's it. Oh, well, do it. oh shit, no, there's... there's. Well, the, the third one's really small. The third one's really small. <laughs> All right. I, I promise, I promise. Okay, I'm, I'm recording cool. again, I'm back. Okay, because this is one that... It should be pretty big. The importance of Lev and Yara. Those mm -hmm. characters coming into the game. Because we, we've, we've only talked Ellie, Abby, Joel, Tommy. These two huge characters. Mm -hmm. And why they're so fucking important. They're incredibly important. They're the best addition to the game. The, the, oh, Lev is the real MVP. Oh. Lev is... My dude. Shoot him with the arrow, my dude. I'll go get if, you if the I, gas mask. If they just made Last of Us 3 Lev, I'd buy it. I wouldn't care. I'd just, yeah, I'd just play I'd that. Do it. I'd do it. I mean, I'd play as Lev I for mean, an entire honest, game. I don't, Last of Us 3 could be literally anybody. I wouldn't give a fuck. I, <laughs> I wouldn't give a fuck. But yeah, no, they are <laughs> super, super important characters, and they took me by surprise because obviously they come in, and it's quite clear that immediately they're Seraphites. And they're killing Seraphites. You were confused. I was, I was confused watching that because you're like, are they are they Seraphites or this? And like, and like, I, I remember it was like me and Redness and Brit in your fucking chat. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're scars. Oh, and uh, well, your friend. Uh, oh God, Dale. Dale. Probably uh, Dale. My my dude Dale. Uh, but he, they were, were spoiling in the chat. But yeah, you were you were confused, and it was just like, oh yeah, no, dude, they're and they stayed that way the whole time. Yeah, I love. I couldn't that. piece it together. I was like, "Well, I understand that they're, uh, you know, they're seraphites, but why are they killing? Why are they killing their kin? What's what's happening?" And and discovering that mm -hmm. was magical. And the, their inclusion was incredible because it, for me anyway, and I didn't need much of it because I was already a big fan of Abby. Yeah. But they humanized Abby to a whole other level because she was able to, she was able to protect two human beings who were on the other side of the conflict. Yep. So it kind of it elevated her out of that kind of quagmire of, well, she's a bad person because she killed Joel. Yeah. It's like, she can't, she's not fundamentally a bad person because she's just, she's found these two people who she's been trained and taught to hate and kill and right. hunt down. Right. And she's, she's taken them in and she's protecting them and she's looking after them and she's going on a mission with them. So it kind of shows how it kind of, it paints her in a completely different light. Yeah. If you were on the fence about her at that point, and then you you still are when you see her go on these on this journey with with Levin Yara. Then I, I don't know what could redeem her in your eyes because it, right. it just it sets her apart from all the other WLF. Yeah, dude, absolutely. You know, I mean, because, with the exception of you know Owen and, besides, and, and such oh, who she, were there. She never cared about being a WLF. She she joined no. this because it was a part. It was a faction that I mean they just, she just had, wanted to be part of something. She had yeah. to be part of something. It was it was safety and this and that, and it gave her the means to do what she needed to do. Sorry, I just yeah. got lost in your eyes because your your beautiful uh, your by eyes is just great. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I hey, you wanted this. As well, yeah, this is fair. <laughs> I can't yeah. fight that. Uh, but yeah, they they, they were incredibly important. I I, I I loved them to bits. I thought um, I thought that the way they presented that story was touching and really well handled. Yes, I think yes. the way in which you know, you run into that first build and I think it's the skyscraper scene and you start you start seeing the other scars, the other seraphites. Yes, yes. And they uh, start calling Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they start calling out Lily. Um mm -hmm. and it took me two or three of the scars to, to say that and then the penny dropped and I was like, okay. Yeah. I get it now. I understand why they're no longer part of that cult. Mm -hmm. They've been forced out because the, they don't accept the apostate. they don't accept him the way he is. You know, Lev hasn't been accepted. And you don't you don't get that yet. You don't because, because no. you haven't you haven't listened to Yara explain that, which is such a huge thing. And we can talk about this for a long time. About mm. I mean, and and I am also one of those people that I, I did have to have some explanation to me, not just from this game, but before you know, trans people. It, it was something mm. that it was very hard for me to understand. 
and I actually my wife explained it to me. She gave me a lot of stuff. I I grew up in a very masculine fucking you know culture you know where I grew up. So that type yeah. of stuff did not make sense to me. But mm-hmm. that's that's why accepting something like this, it's like they didn't they didn't fucking throw it in your face. You know, which a lot of people always claim that like, oh, you know, like, cause Ellie, like Ellie's gay and this and that. And it's like, who cares? And like this, the whole time my wife is sitting there, uh, Cassie, she's going like, is Abby the trans character? And I'm like, no, no, she's mm-hmm. not. She's not the trans character. Like, like I, I get where you could see that, but absolutely not. And then Yara mentions what Lev does to shave her head. And we both went, oh, that's that's awesome yeah because it's not it's just it's part of life it's just natural it's not like hey i'm this what's up Mm. like everybody always expects it to fucking be Mm -hmm. you know they expect something like that to be thrown at you and be like i don't like it because they threw it at me it's like it's just that he he wanted that's how he felt this is how he explained himself and he wanted to be he wanted to be a man I, I yeah. I had a conversation with my wife about it. I mean, um, oh, I I I didn't grow up in a particularly masculine world. Uh, I am I'm I'm quite an Lucky effeminate you. guy anyway. Lucky I you. have you know I might have a beard, but I've always been in touch with kind of my feminine side. Well, we'll make out um, the next time that we meet. I like the sound of that. So um, <laughs> but there's I've always had my 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 mind has always been open to yeah everything and i've had the pleasure of knowing some incredible trans people in my life um i've worked with a few wonderful trans people and i only ever saw them as what they identify as because that is what they are so going into this game i'd heard rumors of there being a trans character and it didn't it didn't shock me it didn't it didn't put me off my gate at all i just was like cool that's wicked the way i explained it to my wife when i was talking to her about it and it wasn't that she didn't understand it we were just having a debate about the game Mm -hmm. and why the trans debate had kind of enraged a lot of people your wife's name is molly right yes yes i just had to, I had to double check <laughs> <laughs> we, we were chatting and effectively as a white man with quite a lot of privilege uh, uh, uh. i can pick up almost any video game from my shelf or a store or anywhere and i'll play as a white man yep with quite a lot of privilege yep. i'm exceptionally well presented in all forms of media I've never had to think. I'm actually pretty sure I made a... you in a creative character mode one time. This is it. I, yeah. Every fucking character looks like me. Pretty generic. So it, it, yeah. it isn't difficult for me to go and find representation for myself in a video game. Absolutely. But I think as as a trans person, how important that must be, especially as a young trans person, to pick up a video game and see a character in the game and go, shit, they're like me. Yeah. I think that's important. And not in like a... I don't mean that in a kind of... Um, can't really find the word but I, I, I think i understand what you mean like not it, in, not in a bad way because i mean not in a bad way it's 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 a new form of thinking and that's and that's something that yeah. a lot of people don't like it, it and it's okay to say it that way because it is a new form of thinking mm. because the fact is is that we are all we have all been trained for our lives i mean ben you're you're 33 right you know i'm i'm 30 i am we are we are technically millennials in that sense like our train of thinking is you know boy girl man woman that type of stuff so the fact is that it it is even in our generation and above us it's a new way of thinking about things and the fact is that there are a lot of people most people as far as i'm concerned that i know anyway who are willing to accept a new form of that so Mm -hmm. at least and i can't speak of it because like you said you know white male privilege shit like that Mm -hmm. i would say that it's okay to accept the fact that like the terminology that we're trying to use, we might, we might mess a few things up here, but we're trying our best to make sure that we say what's proper. You Mm -hmm. know, I, I I have a bunch of friends who are, you know, just not just gay, but bisexual, pansexual, asexual, a lot of them. I'm still trying to figure it all out. So it's just, just so I get the terminology, right? Life is a journey it's and a it, journey. as long as you're opening your mind and you're listening to other people you're doing all right i think absolutely and that's what realistically the, yeah you live in your life in the way you want to live anyone else living their life in the way they want to live doesn't in any way mm. impact or hurt me so cheers buddy cheers. everyone should be allowed to, to to live the life they want to live and i think it's super important for people to be 
uh, represented in video games and in films in the correct way. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Because uh, you know, as if I was a, if I was you know a young boy, um, growing up, you know, identify as a boy. I am a boy, but genetically born a, a female, born a girl. Yeah. If I was that, if I was that trans character, and then I saw a trans character in a video game, it would mean the fucking world to absolutely. me. Absolutely, one hundred. Because it's a mass media, multi-million dollar project. And I'm being identified and included, and I think that's just so important. I think, you know, people call it shoehorning it, it, it shoehorning it in for the sake of it, and do this. It's not for the sake of it. These people exist. It's, it's yeah, we're do. not shoehorning things in. Yeah. It's it's a way of life. It's it's and like I it's, said, it's crazy to me. It took it took me a bit to understand that. I I, I really mm. did. I was I was very ignorant when. And I won't say when this like first started, you know, because it's not like it's a new thing. But like when it really got brought out, I was ignorant. My wife was very upset with me because I just I was like, I don't understand it. Boy, girl, like that's that's what there is. But then she presented me with scientific things and like articles and things that I could read. And I, I spent, I think, a good hour and 45 minutes reading this stuff. And I went to yeah. her and I went, all right, I get it. Yeah. I, I want to as long as you're it. open to do the learning and I you're always fine. was and I, I was that type of person and I didn't want to be that type of person because like even when like homosexuality was becoming I hate, not to put it in a, in a proper term but like it was more acceptable I guess you could say in an awful term but it was it was being more open at least in America for sure it was just like I mean God one of my fucking managers at work was a homosexual and I was just like you're my favorite dude in the world I like I, I hate the fact that I have to learn like I wasn't already taught this. I should have been taught this growing up. And this this is yeah. going back to the conversation of Last of Us of why this character is so fucking important. It starts so, a conversation. It's so fucking great. Ellie being <laughs> gay, Dina being bi, Lev being trans. I'm sorry if I'm yelling, but it's so fucking incredible. <laughs> and I'm a loud son of a bitch and I'll yell into the top of the fucking world. It's super important. And this part, you can be... No, you can't be. Fuck you. All right? It's it's too good. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just... Video games, movies, video, all of it. 100%, it's, it's not, it's, They're not exclusively for straight no, white people. No, they're not. It's ridiculous to think they are. The world isn't exclusively for straight white people. 100%. Media might portray it in that way, but it is not how it is. It's ridiculous and ignorant and naive to think that the world's that way. I understand that we digest a lot of media that's all presented to us in that way. But sad, frankly, that's sad and it's upsetting that there are people that don't identify as that and they have to be force fed that constantly. So Absolutely. I think it's great that our games and our movies are starting to include the full range of the human spectrum. And it should have been that way for always, but people weren't ready for it. And this game has shown that people still aren't ready for it. Exactly. And, and you know what? Let's keep moving that fucking conversation forward. Let's let it mm -hmm. continuously happen. You know what? Cory Balrog, throw this shit into God of War because the Greek gods and all those motherfuckers, they banged everybody. Who gave a shit? Yeah. Norse, exactly. Nor Norse, I bought this because I want to be a fucking Viking. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Ben, you got me excited. This type of topic I fucking love because, mm. listen, let's do it. Throw it into all your goddamn games. Cyberpunk is going to do it. Yeah. You can be whatever the hell you want. You can have tits and a giant dong. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a small dong and tiny tits. <laughs> what? I don't want to be aroused by my own character. That's fair. You're going to spend, you know, 100 hours playing as that character. you got to keep it. I'm going to spend 100 hours making my goddamn character in that game. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the same. Dong, the dong will be the proper size. Anyway, okay, everybody, I promise, this is the last fucking part of this episode. <laughs> We're at two hours. Ben hasn't had a fucking beer this whole time. I feel like I'm the only one getting drunk here. Uh, oh. And that, because, you know, because I'm yelling now. That's, that's something This I, is it. It's happened. This is something I only do at conventions. I get fucking loud as shit. I, I, I the, de check. the decibels have gone up by 10. I was going to say, hold on, let me check my audio levels on. Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> They're in the red. Uh, not quite. Uh, my my. That's right then. My beautiful soundboard ha actually has a thing that limits me. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Uh, don't. That's nice. Yeah, it's it's expensive. Don't buy it. Uh, uh, I won't. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> and 
there's so there's so much more we could do, and I'll even say it if you guys want us to continue this conversation, we'll do another episode because I think honestly, Ben, we could do this, we we could talk about this for probably the next four hours, honestly. Yeah, um, happily. Nice. But yeah. here is here is going to be the last question that I have for you, however long this takes, which I don't think this one will take that long. <laughs> and this is a personal question for me. Why do you think the structure for a Last of Us Part Three should change? And if you want me to explain a little bit more, go ahead. Why do I think it should change? Yes. So and here I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more if, if it's a little bit of a confusing thing for you, right? So as we've talked about in this entire fucking video, right? The gameplay loop, same exact thing as one to two. Story-wise, whether you can say it's a better or worse story doesn't matter. It, it does follow similar beats of how heavy it is. When it comes to the structure of part three, do you think it needs to change to make Last of Us Part 3 stand out from 1 and 2. Does that make more oh. sense? Yeah, okay. no, it makes perfect sense. Okay, okay. Um, I think these stories will stand on their own regardless um, because the world is so interesting and because Naughty Dog and, and everyone that works on these games clearly uh, sees them as an absolute labor of love and the amount of attention to detail they pour into them is just so excruciating that I think regardless of what they do with three i think it will stand up but i i controversially almost don't want a part three uh, yeah yeah because yeah. it feels so finite the best things in the world can are, i, can are I only... ask you a quick question of course you can uh, did you want a part two after originally beating the first one <laughs> no exactly me too me too. I didn't. And I, the, and I give me a fucking sequel for anything all day long. But go ahead. <laughs> no, I agree. It's a very good point. I didn't want a sequel after I finished the first one. I didn't think it needed it. Having looked back on the first one, obviously I've got distance from the first one now. And you look at it, you go, okay, well, there's actually quite an obvious sequel there. And I'm not just saying that because I've played the sequel. Right. But if you look at where that first game ends, the betrayal, you know, Joel doesn't come clean. He's just committed <laughs> that heinous act. There's a very obvious sequel Sorry. there. That's fine. <laughs> you know, we have to find out what the fallout is from that because yeah. I was left at the end of that game thinking, oh my God, will he ever tell her? And that Could kind of hanging... Imagine if we never got that? If we never got an uh, answer? I would be so okay I'd with be, it. I'd be fine with it. God! But now knowing what that kind of became, I, I can't see it any other way, but right. I'm struggling to look at the end of this game and see and see that same hanging thread. There was definitely a hanging thread at yep. the end of the first game. But if you get to the end of this game, I can't see a hanging thread. Yeah. I see I see Abby and Lev making it, and we've already had that confirmed. Yeah, if, if you've like see... listened to the... Uh, I don't know if you have listened to the Last of Us podcast. I did, yeah. Uh, which I recommend. There is an official Last of Us podcast out there. Uh, also listen to anything kind of funny he fucking does about Last of Us. Sorry to plug somebody else real quick, but they're <laughs> so, so good. So, li yeah. Listen to Laura Bailey, Ashley, Troy, all of them talk. Go for it. Uh, please continue, Ben. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, you know, we, we see Abby and Lev. We know they made it. I'd like to think from, from the way I interpret the ending of the game now that Ellie still has a shot at a normal life. I think those characters have been through enough. Yeah. They don't need to be dragged through the mud for another 25 hours. Sure. I would happily play more installments set in that world. But then it begs the question of, you know... When do you stop? Yeah, okay. Because things are only good because they end. Mm -hmm. I've always thought that. You know, so my, my favorite TV shows, I get sad when they end because they were so fucking good. But if they didn't end... You must have better endings in the UK than we do. Oh. <laughs> <I'd>... <laughs> Depends. Episode 24 but, you know... <laughs> of When Beards Collide. <laughs> <laughs> but the... You know, think, things things are good because they don't last forever. Life is good because it doesn't last forever. It, it, you know, it's finite. We have a small period of time to be here and do our thing and, and enjoy ourselves. How many Last of Us games do you make before, before it's done. they lose all their impact? You know, I mean, we could Naughty Dog could put out a new game tomorrow, yeah. and it could follow a new character set in that same world at the start of the outbreak, and it would be phenomenal. And I'd love it. I'm sure I would because I want to see more of that world. I want to see if you know we've seen that portion of of the world. What's happening over here? Oh, you know, what's God. happening on this continent? You said what's exactly happening on this continent? 
you said exactly what I was going to fucking say. You know what what's happening on the other side of the yeah. world. But then that does open the discussion like how how long do they how long do they make these because you could tell you could tell a two story arc a three story arc with characters in England you could tell a ten story arc with characters over in Africa you could it, it's endless so I think it's just about Naughty Dog going okay as long as there's a story to tell as long as there's a story to tell tell it I think if you're gonna make this a trilogy and it's about these characters and their journey in the and world it does feel I like think it's we, going to be I think we'd have to pick up quite some time later Mm -hmm. and i'm talking i'm talking a couple of years a good few years ellie's a lot older i'd like to see ellie as quite a lot older what would what would be really interesting go ahead yeah i'm i'm so excited (laughs) what would be really interesting is we don't get we don't get exposed to the um the bad men at the end of the game a huge amount they're kind of shrouded in mystery you know we turn up on the island in santa barbara i keep calling it an island turn up in santa barbara it's, it's, it's fine I don't, we, know, we, I don't we, even know California, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Midwest. To me, everything's an, everything's an island. England's an island, everything's an island. America's we, technically an island. <laughs> everything's technically an island. <laughs> we, we turn up at Santa Barbara, we kill all these people before we even get a chance to know who they are and what they're about. We see loads of really interesting things. Yep. They're quite clearly keeping slaves there. They're quite clearly shit. keeping people against their will. That place has got some dark shit going on. Yeah. But then we kill them all. We kill pretty much everyone there. Goddamn right. In their eyes, if there's any survivors, Ellie was there to save Abby. Oh. That's how they would interpret that. God, we are on such the same point. I was going to say okay. the same thing. I'm going to do this. Because, do it. <laughs> Ellie inadvertently saved Abby and Lev's life. She went there to kill Abby, and she ended up saving their life, which is the most incredible thing ever. You know, she went there with bloodlust and a desire to murder. You're talking and about she the end up... of part two when she took him off the pole. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. She saved their lives, you know. Right, she saved right. their lives. She did. So they would have died without her. Yep. But for all the people that were running that island, for whoever this group of villains are, as far as they're concerned, Abby and Ellie were working together. Ellie turned up to save Abby and set her free and sent them on their way. So if there's a group of people out there and they are bigger than what they are shown to be at the end of the game, they're going to be out for blood yep. and they're going to be going for Ed, uh, Ellie and Abby combined so i would quite you know i wouldn't be opposed to seeing something a few years later where this group sets out to capture and kill those two characters which brings them two characters back together on a warpath and they have to work together you son to of a fight bi- back you son of a bitch that is exactly what i was gonna say mm. like i'm not to- even kidding you because the fact is is that i mean we all had expectations of how part two was gonna go and let's be honest mm. they make a part three that involves ellie or abby It'll be way different than what we're talking about right now. But oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. But I'm calling it right now. You you force Ellie and Abby after everything they've lost. Like, and here, here's going here's gonna to be the, the fucking twister, right? The, the titty <laughs> twister of what it is, right? There's one reason why Ellie and Abby work together at the point. Lev. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, and, 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 and I'm not just saying that Lev has to die for this because i don't think that's the necessarily reason but that would be a defining point of the story that something mm. ha- that something would have to happen that lev is the driving point of why ellie and abby could you imagine a storyline of here's abby who did give up and was done with it and even ellie who gave up but lost everything if we go about how most people interpret the end Meeting up and being because I I thought that's how the end of Last of Us Part Two was gonna be. Same. I thought she was gonna get there and then they would have to break out together. Mm Mhm. Imagine if it's set quite a few years in the future. I'm talking. How many? How many would you say? Ah, I mean. Imagine if they said it. Ten. Quite a long way in the future. I mean, just cast your, cast your mind. No, I'm cool with that. The, Big the, picture. the only reason, and, and for me, for Last of Us, and I'm this is another, uh, we say this over and over again, another uh, conversation for another time, um, but the concept of time always matters to me within any type of franchise, whatever it mm-hmm. might be, because if it doesn't matter, 10 years, the, the only downside of that, and that's why I was very happy with only the four-year gap with this one, is because... There's so much in between because a 10 year gap from this one to the next one, Ellie can technically, I mean, 
Think about when you were 20, Ben. Glory is. How mu- uh. <laughs> <laughs> what what type of a different person were you at 20? Mm. 10 or, mm-hmm. or sorry, 23 because <laughs> mm-hmm. you're older than I am which I don't mm-hmm. get a lot on the internet anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how old everybody at Gamerjube is, but... Uh, 15. Yeah, they're definitely 15. Jade's 21. E- uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that part, baby. Um, but even so, think about who you were at 23 mm-hmm. years old, 10 years ago, and the amount of change. And this is the problem that I could see a lot of people outside of who make the game, who develop the story, you know, Druckmann and all them. Uh, and Haley, uh, Haley Gross. Haley Gross is the other one. Uh, I try to keep up on all the names as best I can because I love that shit. <laughs> but 10 years, the fact is, is that you can literally sit there and you can be like, I can do what, as a writer, you can do whatever you want with the character at that point cool. because of what's changed. Mm-hmm. And then, unfortunately, you run into the controversy again of this seems out of character. Like people said with Joel and Tommy in that section, like we talked about earlier, it's been four years. That's a long time, guys. That's a long fucking time of different Mm -hmm. situations happening. I am not the same person I was a year ago. A year ago, I was fucking about making content every goddamn day of the week. (laughs) I was working on transitioning from being on RhinoVision to nothing and being on my own. I wanted to shut this shit down. Because I don't want to do it anymore. Shit changes. Shit fucking changes. And that's... It. The only reason I said 10 years was because I'm in, in my mind, I'm getting carried away now. I'm trying to think of this incredible story whereby I don't even know what that group is called, what that group of enemies is called, because we're, we're, the, shown, we're shown so little of them. The ones in Santa Barbara or... Yeah. Oh, I... Oh, God. I think they had a name. They, they, they did have a name. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I... I Whatever it was. We, we, we it's, do, it's, we do it's, have the internet at our disposal. Imagine if they came and instead of trying to kill or kidnap Ellie and Abby, they kidnapped Lev and JJ. Oh my fucking God. Because that would drive them both together to get them back. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very movie-esque story, you know, the kidnap story. In that yeah. world, I don't know if it would make sense because they probably would just kill. Because killing seems yeah, to be the way. I mean, does that that, but, that, that almost seems like if, like if you would have done something like that, maybe too cliche, right? A little cliche. Yeah, but there's, cliche. you know, having that child still alive, having, yeah. you know, Jesse Joel or Joel Jesse, whatever he's going to be called, it's one of the ways around. Having that they, baby there still have alive. Been, there have been some answers out there. There's not a legit answer yet. It's, just, it, no. it's definitely Joel it, Jesse. I think it's Joel Jesse. Junior. I think so. Or Jesse Joel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But having that child alive in that horrible world, it, you know, I don't think it would be a, I don't think it would be beyond Naughty Dog to go and use that character as leverage to pull Ellie back into a brutal world again because she's, I think at the end of this, you know, she metaphorically walks away from it. You see her walking away from the guitar, walking away from yeah. the farm, you know, yeah. walking away from that life. If anything was going to bring her back in, it would be harm caused towards Dina harm caused towards now, let, that let child. Me, let me present to you something here real quick. And I keep mm-hmm. saying real quick, but it's not going to be real quick. Mm-hmm. The fact is, is that, you know, we, we talk about like bringing her back into the world, right? Like mm. that it, it, it sounds so on our end, even a speculation of the cliche, like this is how you bring the character back in. Yeah. Think about it in the terms of just circumstance right mm. as uh, it, regardless of the rumors that you read and how you interpreted it earlier you know which sounds like a really good way to interpret it i will, <laughs> I will not lie i love that idea of what it was but ellie just disappearing moving on from everything from jackson from tommy from dina she's lost everything there's nothing in her world as far as i'm concerned you move into a last of us part three with Ellie being the main character, if that is how you decide to start the fran- the the next story, she's the bad guy because she's just broken. Absolutely mm. broken. There's nothing there. You play as the character who is literally the bad guy. You basically, at that point, make every choice. No matter where she goes, doesn't matter who she runs into, what it is, you're done. Uh, mm. you're, you're, you're just 
in my way is how yeah. I interpret it. However, you get to a point, story-wise, whether you want to consider this bad writing or not, you eventually reach Abby. Someone who has, pr- and I would put, th- this is how I would write it. You would put it to a point of Abby has been sitting there, wherever she's been, with the fireflies or not, enjoying life for the past, let's even say, 10 years. Relaxing, chilling, just me and Lev, the fireflies we met in Santa Barbara, just okay. We do our routes like Jackson was doing. We take care of the infected. We keep them away. Everything's good. And then Ellie the bad guy shows the fuck up on your doorstep. (laughs) And she's looking there and she's going, I'm just passing through. You guys seem to have, like, like logically, you guys seem to have a good stronghold. I'm not here to fuck with anything. I'm literally just walking by. And then whose face shows up over the fucking corner? Abby. And even though you had that moment at the end of Last of Us Part 2, where she finally saw Joel in a happy moment, which a lot of people forget about why Ellie decided to not do what she did. Mm. For the first time, it was not PTSD. She saw Joel just playing the guitar and being happy for a moment. She sees Abby. And I'm not saying that it's going to make her, like, fucking bloodlust for her, but it all of a sudden just goes, Hey. And then something else happens in the game. And I don't I don't have an idea right now. <laughs> but something else happens. Like 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 when Abby showed up at the fucking theater, it changes perspective. Because how how <sighs> crazy would that be? Whether or not you took another perspective for somebody else's point of view, whether it was Abby's, Ellie's, even Lev's, or somebody else in the perspective, just Ellie you are play like you play as Ellie as the bad guy. You're the fucking <sighs> asshole. And you get to that moment. How crazy. And even if, as you said, Ben, 10 mm. years later. I mean, I just part think, of me go ahead, still go ahead. wants, go you ahead. know, part of me still wants to believe that the, the, the young, the young girl you see in the first game, who's so full of life and promise and wants her life to mean something, oh. which is the most important thing that I cling on to from all of Ellie's journey. You know, That's she wants her life, up, but I didn't think we'd have time for that. <laughs> She wants her life to mean something. I, I'd like to believe from the end of this game, from the catharsis of her walking away from the guitar, uh, whether she's going back to Jackson to be with Dina, whether she's already been and seen Dina, however however you interpret it. Yeah. I'd like to assume that at that point... You, we could get back to her? She's retained, you know, some of what makes her her as much as she could after all that she's been through. Yeah. I think to see her become the bad guy would be would be that final nail in the coffin. I think it would be really tough for a lot of people to, well, and to with, swallow. And with what you just said, like the, mm. like even, and I'm not saying that my idea is perfect by any means, but like <laughs> that, that concept of being the villain and then mm. switching it back around to like, what if Abby or Lev or even that crew was the one who brought her back to what she was? It's not mm. Dina. It's not Tommy. It's not anybody who was involved in her past. It was new people. The per. And especially if it was Abby, the person that she mm. was out to fucking literally split in fucking half. <laughs> that could, I mean, that could be something. I'm not. Whatever a- they do. I mean, I, I trust, I trust in the company. I trust in their writing. And I think that they're a strong enough team to kind of carry whatever they do in the future. I just hope that if they make The Last of Us 3, which I'm, you know, if you just look at monetary value, yeah, they will. You well, know, well, if, I mean, if we just go, if we just money talks, so yeah, there, there probably will be more. It will, it will <laughs> happen whether or not that, I mean, Neil Druckmann will make it. He won't start it until the story is right. Hence why we all didn't I, start all, this one until it yeah. was right. All, all I hope is that if they, if they do it and when they do it, when they do it. Seven years. Seven years time. We'll see you in 2027. PS6, it, baby. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> At that point, I just hope that if they do bring back any existing and surviving characters, they do it for the right reason. I, 100%. I, I don't, I don't have to see another game with Ellie and Abby. I will be fine if they're not in it. Yeah. Or if they're not even playable, they just appear within that world, and we get to see where they're at, but they're not 
the focus of the story. We can pick up with some different kind of conflict. Maybe it is pushing back against this kind of new group that we saw yeah. in Santa Barbara yeah. who are trying to assert their dominance across the world, but we play as different people. Well, the, the, and that uh, brings us into well, contact with Ellie and Abby. Well, I mean, the, uh, Anything. Well, from what we do with uh, with what we do with Ellie, as far as I'm concerned, everybody in Santa Barbara's fucking dead because I killed them all. So I uh, killed them all. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Cat- Katarina Island, the fireflies are back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I mean, you, you could theorize and theorize and theorize well, until we, we could do that all day i mean obviously we've been sitting here for well now oh we're, we're now at two hours ben uh i really hope that uh this this <laughs> video gets a couple of views i know on the rhino vision channel it's not going to get anything uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think the average view time will be two minutes oh, and we, 30 we, seconds let's let's please keep, let's please keep each other uh up to date on what the view time is mm. on each channel of course <laughs> of course um absolute mods have but, fun editing it uh, fuck you well that's that's the rest of my day uh <laughs> you gotta make that thumbnail though baby that's every 30 seconds don't worry about that oh fuck you <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys i thank you so much for if, if you are still here if by chance you if you're still here, here i will send you uh a like a handcrafted metal i in will the post. Se- i will send you rhino vision merch that i have i will pay for it and i'll send you one <laughs> Which you can get on teespring.com. Uh, nobody <laughs> nobody ever buys it. That's part of the shirt that I threw away. Uh, these hats are not for sale. Uh, I'm, I'm smelting down metal and crafting metal. You can't top that. Like I'm going to craft that shit. Oh, is this, a, is this a competition, Ben? With uh, my bare hands. <laughs> listen, I'm going to make the Big B dildo uh, that's going to be sold on the RhinoVision website. Uh, <laughs> my head It's on just the top. his head. Uh, oh god, uh, this this mm. turned into something. I'd bad. buy that. I'd probably stick that right here you know, on my mantelpiece. I, w- I would buy it too, just because I could be yeah. like, look at that. I could look at Ben all day, and my friends would be like, I'd... who the fuck is that? Because nobody else in the Rhino Vision crew knows who the fuck you are. But like, who the fuck's that guy on top of that dick? Like, what's? <laughs> he's like, uh, he's a guy who uh, blew past us in subs in less than four months. So, yeah. <laughs> That's me on my jet. Yeah, right. Shooting off. Anyway, in case you didn't get that. Anyway, guys, seriously. Honestly, if you are still here at the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. We would love to do more of this because it seems like me and Ben could really talk all day about mm. this type of stuff. I mean, this is definitely a game, Ben, I think you'd agree, that has more of a conversation than many others, um, mm. at least as of right now. Yeah. And I really appreciate you all um, watching us and paying attention to what we're doing. I mean, even... Huh, Ben has a lot more subscribers than we do, and it's fucking incredible. But it's all still small YouTube, and we really appreciate it. This conversation needs to continue on because this game, whether you like it or you don't like it, it has an opportunity for you to talk about it, and it's fun to do so. I'll argue with you. I don't care. Let's do it. Fuck it. <laughs> you know? But anyway, um, we're going to end the episode here. The first episode of When Beards Collide. My name is Ryan. I am Admiral Redbeard. Uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash RhinoVision Studios. And then we have Mr. Big B over here. Ben? Hello. I'm very sleepy. It's quite late here in the UK. I'm going to eat my dinner now. Thank you for watching. I believe you can check him out on... Uh, ben, I don't know if you... Just is it youtube.com slash Beardo Benjo? Or yeah, yeah, nice and simple. Okay. I, I got that. I got so that uh, custom URL on lockdown. Yeah, YouTube.com slash Beardo Benjo. He does a lot of great videos. Uh, Will It VR is probably my favorite uh, for, uh, thing. Wanking Simulator. Yeah, it's it's so great. Wait, oh, God, Wanking Simulator. I've had that download on my fucking PC since you did that video, and I deleted it today. <laughs> what? You, Dude, already got, you and Jacksepticeye already got the views, so I'm out. Nah, that's true. Yeah, yeah we gobbled up all you those did views. It, and Jack did it, and we were done. Um, but anyway, guys, if you want to see more of me and Ben talking about it, and I promise, I promise, next time we do this, it'll be shorter. We'll set a timer. <laughs> we will actually set a timer. <laughs> uh, ben, last thing. Personally, on your own time, not on your channel, what video game are you playing right now? Uh, I just received it in the post today. I don't have it to hand. Oh, I saw it. I oh, do. I saw it. No. Oh, did I not? I saw it on Twitter. Oh. Deadly Premonition Deadly 2. Premonition 2, baby. I hope it's fucking shit. Yeah. Because that's the point of Deadly Premonition. Did you get that on the Cannot Switch? Uh, yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Gonna get stuck into that this afternoon. Fair afternoon. Fair. It's nine. It's nine p.m. It's it's definitely the evening now. It hey, was the hey, afternoon hey, when we started. You, you need to pour yourself one of these because I, I'm not gonna lie. I can't go anywhere now. <laughs> You're done now. You ain't yeah. driving nowhere. Uh, but I'm. Uh, yeah. I, deadly I, premonition too. I've been playing uh, Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, Great game. Like crazy. I can't stop. I figured we'd end the episode with just something a little more lighthearted about what we're playing. <laughs> uh, I took that from, a great I, game, though. I, I took that from kind of funny. What are you playing? Uh, it's not a Rhino Vision production if we don't copy something on the internet. So, uh, but anyway, the, guys, the most sincere form of flattery. Yeah, right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, Ben. This is awesome. I could keep talking. It's good fun. About it. I cannot wait fun. to fucking edit this. Have fun with it. I it's going to be a. It. A monstrous. You make the description, you make the thumbnail, you make the tags, and you send them over, and we're going to do this. Easy. <laughs> Easy, he says. I have... Oh. Easy. Fuck. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, and who knows? You guys want us to talk about something else? Let us know in the comments. Ghost of Shishima, one week, baby! Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I don't think that would kind of incite the same conversation, so we might be all right. Oh, not the, no, definitely not the same conversation. And I'm going to end the recording there.